YouTube. Mm, that's yeah. good. It's handy. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for people because like the other video is happening. Yeah. Hey Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Oh, keep talking. I want to check if Discord is just eating you because you just hopped in and it likes to do that, or your mic is dying. It's echoing real bad. What? I'm not. I hear intermittent Jeff. Oh. Uh, I hear no Jeff. He's dead. Oh. And Bo, you might say say it's echoing because you have the stream open in the different. Jeff is dead. Man yeah, has killed him. Oh. Yeah, it's not echoing. Okay. Oh, stream happening same time as the premiere. The premiere is a two minute ad. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, yeah. Technically, yeah. Mm, I think it's still eating you, bud. Oh, Jello, if you keep doing more um, songs for future uh, installments of the series, I just wanted to get this out here now. Uh, On stream? <laughs> in you... front of everyone? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you keep uh, if you keep adhering to the pattern where it always ends with something something you know, something that ends in aced epithet erased, uh, I just want to propose that you find a way to work in a future one where that rhyme is something about eating paste. <laughs> That's the stink theme for the stink <laughs> season. I cannot stop eating paste epithet erased. <laughs> How much is the audiobook standard 20? It is $12. Wow. What a steal. That's as much as like a, a, a cheap DoorDash order or some shit, maybe. If you're ordering fries and nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how about now? Yeah, there yes. we go. All right. Yay. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry, I'm, I'm late, I had to... I had to go eat some food for the first time for today. I uh, woke up to, um, you know, the house being on fire because, <laughs> because yep. the website was was wrecked. Um, I want to thank everybody for completely destroying our website today. The first time it's happened. Uh, it's really <laughs> exciting. Yeah, I, um, the, when, it, when it came out, I was, like, still doing the advertisement for it, which just played uh, two minutes ago, also on this channel. And hopefully some people are coming from there. Uh, and it's like, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll set that up. And I linked it out to Kickstarter people. And I was like, it's around. And then like three minutes later, people were like, the website is crashing. I'm like, we did it, guys. We ruined their evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have had an excuse to jump into the trenches with the customer service team here. Uh, the tech team and everything uh like literally uh both me and justin were uh we're, we're uh, i'm the ceo uh justin's our coo so both of us were in there logging all these customer service emails and uh relieving some stress from the rest of the team so it was it was fun to do that and to like see everybody's you know what your audience has been incredibly polite through the whole thing uh, that's good don't really you know, it's it's, yeah, it's, that's it's you don't expect customers to be that polite. I don't think usually, uh, but they were they were great. So thank you, everybody. So it was a two minute ad for a book. Damn. Yeah, it's ten hours. It's th it's three more season ones worth. Enjoy what we give you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um. Welcome to this. This is going to be our celebratory all-day stream. Uh, this is supposed to be the launch of at least one version of all types of the book. But unfortunately, uh, the website I use for actually, like, getting what I'm going to call the alpha version of the hard copy out. Uh, just so I was like, I want every kind of version when people can get the audiobook, which is the star of the show. Uh, unfortunately, Ingram Spark was like, oh, we don't know what images are and we don't know how to print anything. And it's like, buddy, you guys are a printing website. 300 DPI JPEGs should not crash your website. They should be the minimum requirement for printing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I j literally just like right before the stream got an email where they were like, yeah, it'll take a little while to get that hardcover version out. So right now, uh, today is essentially celebrating 
the digital PDF version, uh, we'll get an EPUB out for more official, like, ebook, Kindle type stuff as soon as I can. Again, that's an Ingram Spark problem. Um, that one's supposed to be out already, and it says it is, but it's not. I checked. Uh, so yeah, but like, that's all the bad news. Getting that out of the way. Welcome to the celebratory Epithetorace Prison of Plastic stream. We have been working on this in some form or another for 18 months. Uh, technically two years for me, because I wrote one chapter two years ago in winter, and then I was like, I'll get back to this, and I wrote the rest of it in a month in, like, May, and, uh, have not stopped working on it since. So let's, let's quickly introduce everyone, and then let's, uh, wrap back around to Jeff, and we can talk about where you can get the audiobook. So, um, alphabetically, Bo, uh, who is currently drawing and will probably be occupying most of the stream. Yeah. So I did the illustrations for the book. For now, you can get the PDF version on Jello's Patreon, or if you got it through Kickstarter already, you should have got an email with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, if you are a Kickstarter backer, um, I've been, every time anyone at Soundbooth has sent me like a technical update, I've been forwarding it to you guys for like the rules of how to not give you or them a headache uh, when downloading. So be sure not to use like Google or Apple ID autofill. You have to put in your stuff manually. And then other than that, just follow along with the, they, they made me a PDF, a nice looking PDF of how to get it. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I am. Um... Uh, Jeff, I was telling other people in here, because so many other parts of this process, because, like, there's a million different things attached to this Kickstarter, like, hoodies and merch and stuff, and, uh, you guys are the only people who I've been like, hey, can you do this? And you're like, yeah! And then anytime there's a problem, you're like, we're figuring out the problem, and I'm like, wow, I'm not used to this! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that customer service PD, that uh, instruction PDF was all Justin, man. He he whipped that up in no time, and uh, pretty pretty proud of him. Yeah, it was it was real nice, and I sent it over the Kickstarter. Um, yeah. Uh, next, he didn't work on the book, but you will be uh, using him as a a voice box. Uh, Aloha is here. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Hey, I'm Aloha. I'm not in the book. Uh, some of you know me. Uh, I am just here to grab questions from chat and then stream them directly to Jello's brain. Uh, but yeah. Great. All right, uh, Aram, also not in this book. Yes, uh, also <laughs> not appearing uh, anywhere in this book. Uh, I'm Aram. I was a player in the game that was the original thing the, the original chassis to which this story was bolted in its original incarnation <laughs> you can um, tell he originated percy by the way he yeah. decided to phrase that <laughs> yeah um that's why i am labeled as source material uh and i'm just here to hang out and have a good time um so uh, hopefully that will occur oh and seeing a lot of messages in chat like oh Sound booth is down with a 504 air. That'll happen. There's a lot of you trying to buy stuff. Like literally that ad just came yeah. out. So now the YouTube crowd is going to be coming in. So uh Right. Just just keep trying. Like and you know, it'll be there. You'll you'll get it soon enough. It's not like broken, broken. It's just a lot of traffic. Um we'll we'll end on Jeff so you can talk about the process. Uh Kai. Sure. Hey, what's up? Not a lot of oh, there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Kai. Um, I did um, some of the portrait designs for, uh, what is it? What did I do? I did I did Wolf. I did um, B uh, Spelling and Rick. B and Rick, yeah. And I also did uh, some additional animation for the uh, the ad. Yeah, you did, you did my favorite shot in that, which is the, the one where it, like, whips from Molly to um to Lorelai at the very end. That's honestly my favorite shot too. I did that one I think I did that one second. I cause I was like, I need to get that behemoth out of the way because I'm like, oof. Okay. That was hard. Oh, and then alphabetically, Cyrus just joined. <laughs> Cyrus is in the book. Hello. Cyrus. Hello. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah, you sound yeah. good. Yeah. Cyrus, why can't I escape you? Because I'm always gonna be there for you, Wyatt. Oh, yeah. We're we're bonsai blasters. We stay together in this. Also... Yeah, sorry. 
Yeah. So, uh, Cyrus, who do you who do you play in Epithet? You're actually all over this book. Yeah, I play, I play like. Uh, let's see. I play the famous bearded cop. Uh, one of my favorites there, uh, Doctor Beef Thin. He has a PhD in death. Uh, car, pff, not car crash. That's you, White. I play Hi. Dark Star. Hello, I'm Dark Star, and I also play uh, the the game show uh, voice in the book as well. Yeah, you are the the Hexacon. So Cyrus is the Spelling Bees game show. There's a there's a really good um, just question mark that always makes me laugh because it just talks in letters. Yeah, uh, and then going back down, Sono. Hello, uh, I helped out as a colorist on season one and did a bunch of art stuff for the book, like designing uh, Feeny and Trixie's uh, fairy forms, and I did some work on that hoodie commercial too. Yeah, and then uh, Wyatt. Hello, uh, I'm Wyatt Baker. I am in the book briefly uh, as, again, as Car Crash, uh, who is, spoiler alert, grounded. Um, but my influence can be felt all throughout the audiobook as I worked very closely with Brendan to uh, produce the audiobook and make sure it's all timed good and sounds delicious. And it is and it does. So I'm looking forward to everyone being able to hear it. Yeah. All right. Then let's wrap back around to Jeff and talk about Sound Booth Theater. Hey guys, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me into this stream. My name's Jeff Hayes. I am the lead narrator and CEO of Sound Booth Theater. Some of you may know me as uh, Dungeon Crawler Carl. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, uh, Sound Booth Theater, the the app, the platform that we have, it's only been around for two years or so, um, a little a little bit more than two years, uh, and it's basically been our attempt to uh, create. A place where we can sell audiobooks without having to deal with Audible. Um, most <clears throat> most of our stuff is on Audible, so if you guys search for Sound Blue Theater or Jeff Hayes on Audible, you'll find more than 200 audiobooks. Um, but uh, yeah, us hosting uh, stuff like this, where you guys, um, where Kickstarter people are are funding their audiobooks, this is kind of exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, I've, I've seen a, a bunch of uh, messages in the chat. I'm watching the chat like a hawk right now, um, seeing what people are saying about uh, about the app and everything. Yes, uh, we don't have offline listening right now, which is ridiculous, in my opinion. It's it's Dealing with de developers is, is a very strange thing. You, you, you know, there's certain things that you would think they would know what what to do, right? Like, uh, like this is an audiobook app where we want people to be able to download stuff onto their onto their phone, and for whatever reason, they don't think to make it available without offline listen or with offline listening. So that's getting fixed. That's getting worked on right now. Um, another thing people were asking about is uh, being able to download the audio. Not yet. We don't have that capability yet. Um, that is also an anti-piracy thing. But if you are a, an Android user, you might be able to find a way to get the MP3s <laughs> off of your phone. Uh, you might be able to. I don't know. Depends on how familiar you are, you are with the device. And uh, let's see. The last thing was just, yeah, the, the website is slow right now. Sorry about that, guys. We were, you know, it's just a lot of traffic at once. So thank you so much again for breaking our website. We really appreciate it. Yeah, like just just the Kickstarter alone um, is like seven hundred keys of people trying to download stuff, and like it's not just Kickstarter people going for it. So that's a lot. Um, and like in one in some ways, it's like a little merit badge to be like, "What? Yeah, we had so many downloads. We were uh, breaking the website. No big deal." But uh, yeah, so just. <laughs> It's not broken, broken. Right, right, right. Yeah. It is not broken, broken. Uh, you just do some refreshes. I was getting the 504 a lot as well. I was in there uh, doing customer service with with the rest of the customer service crew. Um, just, I, a little bit slower than them. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you that because uh, I'm not usually at that level. But, um, yeah, uh, just, just be patient with the website. I'm sure also after maybe a couple days things might calm down a little, but I think... Since this stream is going, and since you just put out the ad, we're probably experiencing another giant wave, uh, similar to earlier this morning. Yeah. The um, 
so uh other questions on what type of book will exist and where it will be uh it is on the screen but i've learned from my time on twitch it literally doesn't matter what you have on the screen people will ask anyway um <laughs> today you can get specifically the audiobook version which is the sound booth thing we've been talking about and that again is the big like that specifically is what the kickstarter was for like the kickstarter was specifically for the audiobook it yeah. just happened to do really well <laughs> um i was gonna be like i can publish this on my own and i'm still kind of doing that but the uh audiobook is the big crown jewel i think it might be the best way to experience this it's very spicy it's definitely one of the best audiobooks out there probably it's full music score full voice acting full you know all the all the bells and whistle just right in one place so can i take a second to like compliment the audiobook actually I, I hope you don't mind. Do you, oh, do you mind? Uh, gee, I don't know. Yeah, I sure. About... Uh, go ahead. I, I print. Oh, right. stop print it, you. <laughs> right. um, yeah, so uh, Sound Booth Theater has been doing full cast sound effects and music audiobooks for a few years now. Um, we really enjoy it. It's, it, you know, this is one of the reasons why we started the platform in the first place because, you know, Audible takes 60%. So it's hard. It's much harder to get um, the, you know, a, a good margin if we're investing uh, money into getting more actors, more sound effects and more music. Um, so expanding that profit margin has been, you know, very important to us. I, now, of course, we're spending a lot of money to do that, but it's investment in the future. But I don't know if you've done an audiobook with full cast sound effects and music before. Maybe you're just practiced from producing the animation, but it's pretty much seamless. It feels great. All of your actors are wonderful. Um, it sounds like they were directed in uh, in real time. Um, you know, it's it. And also, I have to compliment your your narration as a narrator myself. Um, you know, lots of lots of great inflection uh really well timed uh, the comedic timing is awesome and that's very rare for actual audiobook narrators and you know I, i'm i'm a total snob when it comes to narration i'm 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 gonna get turned off really easily by a narrator and you just did such a fantastic job uh, Thank you. with this production I'm, I'm proud that we're that we're hosting it actually and i'm hoping you were you were saying earlier that uh, you know it was quite an exhausting process. Well, you know we have a studio that uh, that does just this. So um, you know if at any point you need some uh, some of that work taken off, some of that workload taken off you, we're we're around. Yeah, uh, thank you for the compliments, Wyatt and I. Wyatt and I fan ourselves and shake hands. Oh, 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 oh. Um, <laughs> The, so, like, I can, I can respond to that, uh, in, like, by talking about what versions of this book and future books will come out when. So, again, like I said, audiobook out now, it's in the pinned chat comment, um, etc, etc. Uh, you can also get a digital version of the book on Patreon. It's a PDF, uh, which I know is, like, I always forget that, like, everyone mostly consumes internet through their phones now, um, because I never do that. So, uh, I'm a 70-year-old, 30-year-old man, um, but PDFs are not as good in general. Uh, that's not the format ebooks are normally in. They're usually an EPUB. Uh, but you can, if you want to read along and if you want to see Bo's really, really nice illustrations, uh, you can check those out. It's available on my Patreon. Um, that, the link to that, uh, here, I can get it real quick. I, per I put it here just for this. Hi. You got it? Yeah, I can get it. Aloha's getting it. Uh, so, you can get that version now. It's $10 on my patron, uh, Patreon. I understand it's not like the highest fidelity version of the book you could get, but the upside is if you t spend the $10 to get it on my Patreon, that also means you get access to like almost everything on my Patreon, which is like a four year backlog of extra content. So I don't feel too bad about it. Our long-term plan, I wanted the hardcover version and the official EPUB ebook out today, both of which I was making through Ingram Spark and going to distribute through there on other platforms. That did not end up happening. Uh, I won't go into the details because they're boring. 
It was Ingram Sparks' fault. I tried my best. I reformatted all of Bo's illustrations multiple times. And even in the end, they were still like, I don't know how an illustration works. <laughs> um, and I will also say, if you are one of the backers who did uh, like who did the 150 signed copy tier, thank you so much for that. Um, I actually do have a deal in the works. And I, bet I, I was talking to them. I was like, hey, can we finish this after I get this version launched? I can't like do any more contract stuff this week. And they're like, yeah, sure, get back to us next week. So the ink isn't dry on it, but I do have a publisher lined up, like an actual publisher for a hard copy um, that is professional. And that's the version I'm confident will be good and look nice. And I'm sure when I hand them a 300 DPI nine by six illustration, they won't go, we have no idea what to do with this industry standard. You just handed us. Um, <laughs> That's going to take a couple months, though, and I wanted people to have some version of the book they could read along with, because people have, like, I have gotten comments that are like, English is my second language, I don't, I, like, it's hard to just listen, I can't really understand what everyone's saying all the time. Um, if you need something to follow along with, the Patreon version is out for you. You can get that right now. By the end of the month, I, I'd like to be confident enough to say just a couple days. And that's possible, but I'm not going to bank on it because, again, Ingram Spark bad. Uh, there will be what I'm going to call the alpha copy of the hardcover that you can buy from Ingram Spark. Uh, I'm also going to put up a paperback as soon as I can. I'm going to have to buy a separate ISBN for that and do a lot of the process again and edit things on my own end to make it work. So I think I'm going to be selling by the end of December. The alpha version of the hard copy, and this is the self-published one, so it might have a couple errors in the printing because I cannot control that. But if you want an early access copy, you should be able to buy it by the end of this uh, December, and I'm hoping it'll ship like and get to you in January. Uh, I'm really hoping that the EPUB, which should not have any problems, uh, will be up within a week. So if you use Kindle or Nook or something, you can buy it on there and it should go to distributors. Like you should be able to search it. I will tell you right now, I have not been able to find it on any of those websites, even though it says it's up on them. Uh, so I will have to talk to them over the weekend. Uh, but like, th that's why this is now a like, yay, the audiobook is out stream because that's the thing that is out and done and you can actually get it um, in the long term. In addition to having, you know, the real version of the hardcover done in, it's probably going to take like 10 or 11 months. That's how publishing works. Sorry. Um, in addition to that, and that's the one I'm going to sign and send out to people because it'll be actually good and I'll be confident in it and it will be worth your money. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to be going back next and novelizing the first season i think i'm gonna record those at sound cadence and i'm i'm pretty sure i'd like to do those like the editing for those audiobooks at uh sound booth theater while wyatt and i at sound cadence are also recording the next book that is the sequel to prison of plastic so really like flyover this is technically the third Epithet book. I'm going back to write the first two, both of which are way shorter than this one. We're going to record those. And then I'm going to write the fourth book. <laughs> so, a lot. A lot in front of me still. Okay, that was a long time. Were there any... Hey, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Were there any good, obvious questions that I missed multiple times? Oh. I, I was legit uh, spending that entire time just answering questions in chat that I already knew the answers to. Thank you. Uh, but uh, a lot of the questions was just obviously like the site stuff, which Jeff already answered. You know, th there was like a lot of people going to the site. So it's just like, just keep trying. It'll slow down eventually and you can buy the book, you know, currently the PDF stuff. So just go to the Patreon, like Jello just said. Uh, mostly just stuff like, uh, will this get animated? And like, obviously there's no current oh, plans to, yeah. for there to be animated stuff I, like you know i've answered this a million times so i'm gonna have to answer it until i'm in a coffin um no <laughs> there are there are literally no plans ever again to animate epithet erase right now uh you never need to ask the answer is always going to be no unless someone comes to me and goes hey 
I'm an angel investor producer. Here is $10 million in two years. I will not do that again. Uh, we did it <laughs> We did it on a budget that um, I, oh, I'm getting a little echo from someone. I hope it's not me. I think it's Wyatt. Ah. Oh, oh might be Jeff. I'm going to scream real be. quick. Ah. Well, it's gone now, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I scared it away with no. my screams. Um, yeah, so again, um, and I've gone over this many, many, many places. Uh, and on Patreon, if you buy the book, you can listen to me talk about the production of season one for about three hours. Uh, and how it, this is not a joke, did almost kill me. Uh, and I had to take an entire year off to recover afterwards. But um, Kai and I, in various productions, like, uh, like I, I, we're in a bunch of servers for in uh, different indie things. And any time that someone's like, hey, what did you spend on Epithet? I'll be like, we spent, I, I was given $100,000 to animate seven episodes. And then I spent an additional quarter million of my own money and uh, loans I got. And everyone I've talked to who watches this and has never worked in animation is like, that's so much money. And everyone who's done animation goes, literally, how did you do that? That's like a fifth of what you should have had. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so no plans. No plans at all yeah. to animate it. The, the only like... Mm -hmm hey, we might do this, is there was a Kickstarter stretch goal last year where if we got, like, essentially, basically a hundred thousand more dollars than we got, and all that money could have been used to animate one episode. And even then, we would have been doing it on the cheap. Um, and, like, uh, Sono, I'm sure you remember this, but, like, in season one, because I was, I was everyone, there were no other managers. I did all the accounting, I did the budget, um, and I went to different people, and I was like, Hey guys, we're gonna be broke. Are you all like, is everyone okay taking like the lowest rate you'll possibly take? And the artists took the brunt of that. Like the portrait artists were like, yeah, and you guys all worked for pennies, which I still feel bad about. Um, but yep, I I don't want to do that to anyone working for me again. I don't want to do that to me. Uh, so just anytime you see anyone asking, will this be animated? No, the answer is always no definitively yeah. no um, spread it around if you ever see it comment on it uh, spread the word <laughs> yeah. and um yeah take to the streets <laughs> yeah. well you there boy what day is it why sir they're never gonna animate epithet erased <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> oh i love a good explicitly that scene from christmas Carol <laughs> yeah. reference yeah, but, um <laughs> Then uh, next question I see a lot is, uh, what's the ETA on the TTRPG book? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm not giving one officially yet. I actually, yeah. the stream again is going to be going like all day. And I'm happy to like mm -hmm. go over that in a more very yeah. detailed capacity in like probably a couple hours. And maybe especially if Rhea gets here, because Rhea is the main artist for that. Uh, she was the lead artist on season one. I have... A I have too much written for it, frankly. Uh, I'm actually going to need to go in and, like, really trim it down. Because it's already, mm -hmm. like... <sighs> oh, it's so much money. Or, it's so many pages. It's also so much money, because now I'm paying Rhea, like, a real rate, since I have Kickstarter funding. Um, but, yeah. I don't have an ETA for that. It's, it's going to be, like... <sighs> I've gotten a lot of assets, which I'll show off. Like, I've gotten very nice backgrounds and very nice portraits, and there's a lot of them. Uh, and we're going to do a layout. Like, I want it to be nice. And uh, instead of just half-assing something, which I really should get more cap uh, like comfortable doing, I was like, what if I made a really good TTRPG book? Like, I spent... <laughs> I spent like a month and a half refining a wild magic table and it's still not done. Uh. But because yeah, because wild magic sucks. Wild magic's awful and it mostly just exists to ruin campaigns. But I was like, what if I made the world's first good wild magic table? And I've really been working on it and it's almost there. Um, yeah. 
Uh, another thing people have been asking about. Oh yeah, so yeah. when is the TTRPG book coming out? No idea. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not even going to speculate because I've got too much uh, stuff to work on, and that's a pretty, pretty hefty, hefty backer reward. Um, yeah. Someone else uh, asked something just two seconds ago. I wanted to answer. Uh, when is the digital art production book coming out? That is the other backer award that every single backer gets, I believe, if you back like five dollars or more. Um, that will come out soonish. That, and not to say it's gonna be bad, but that's the thing. I'm like, I am kind of gonna half-ass that one, quote unquote, because all I need to do is grab a bunch of sketches and some testimony from the artists. Testimony, that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, that that'll be out sooner than the TTRPG. Uh, another question uh, that was a. Uh earlier was uh just one for Bo, which is just like hey Bo, what brush do you use for the the sketch please that's what they said the sketch so i guess for like the poses you made uh for these sketches it's mostly just variations of the base clip studio colored pencil brush it's my favorite i just kind of make different versions of it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you make another audiobook? Yes. Every epithet book that was never animated is going to have an audiobook at the exact same production level as this one. Um, I I think that the voices are a huge part of this series, and the reason I was comfortable moving this to an audiobook, and I'm happy to see that a lot of people who are reading it seem to agree. They're like, yeah, no, this completely works, because... Epithet was always kind of an audiobook. The characters were always narrating their actions, and now it's just a narrator's doing it. And the upside of it being books is there's a lot of characters who I would have need to cut for time who can now be characters, uh, which is great because, man, uh, the next couple arcs have so many people running around. <laughs> Maybe it will finally work out for old Dan. <laughs> I don't know if I'd bet on that, but <laughs> neither would I, and it's in my name, even. Uh, right, a well, question from chat. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going to say, guys, I probably need to get out of here to uh, keep yep. watching my crew. You know, I'm sure the traffic's driving them crazy right now. But uh, thanks for having me on. If you guys mm -hmm. uh, have any other questions that you're not sure about, people are asking things about Sound Blue Theater, you can uh, send me some DMs and I'll, I'll do my best to answer you. Um, and I just, if, if you don't mind me plugging some stuff, um, yeah, go ahead. Stars Have Eyes, I think you guys would really enjoy. There's a ton of different content on our platform. Uh, and a lot of it is full cast sound effects and music as well. So I, if you guys enjoy um, this audiobook, uh, there's plenty of other things for you to explore. Thank you so much, Jello, for uh, for bringing your audiobook to us. I'm really proud to be hosting it, and I hope uh, everyone has a good time. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for being here, and it's a it's a surprisingly good fit to tie into that TTRPG book question. A lot of the other content on their site is like TTRPG inspired or it's very much in that right. world. So on, like Epithet was a very good fit. So if you yeah. like that kind of stuff, check out their other work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like our main genre, what we made all our money on is uh, called Lit RPG and Game Lit, which is all like stuck in a video game fiction. So like gamers, you know, those are the kinds of people that we really love having around us and uh, who enjoy our products a lot. So. Uh, Thanks once again, and I'm out of here. I hope you guys have a great night. Yeah, you too. All right. All right. Bye. Peace. Bye. What a, what a swell. Oh, he's a nice a guy. Swell. Yeah, what a nice guy. So, what, uh, are you, what are you working on now? I have just made you a book. <laughs> <laughs> what is it doing, bro? Okay, Jello, but what and have you done even, for me lately? That, that's not even done yet. <laughs> oh man. Uh hello, Lenti and Yam. Uh introduce yourselves hello. in just a second. But um oh. oh and someone oh my goodness, everyone they were all afraid of Jeff. <laughs> <They're> all <laughs> no, I just got home. Oh. No, the party starts when I walk in, let's be real here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh does the audiobook have a PF uh, PDF alongside it? Um no, they are separate purchases. Right now you can get the PDF, and again, it's a PDF specifically. Um, so if you're on a phone, it might be a little hard to view. 
uh, and even open sometimes. Um, but you can get the PDF on Patreon. I recommend reading it on a desktop. Uh, if you want, if you're willing to wait like another week, I can probably get an EPUB out, which can be used on Kindles and stuff. But uh, the service I use for that is bad uh, TM and did not do a good job. <laughs> so those are not out today. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask that or answer that someone just said. Um, oh, well, uh, while I look for that, uh, Lenti, introduce yourself and then Yam. Hi, stream. Uh, my name is Marissa Lenti. Uh, I voice Stink in the original season of Epithet as well as this audiobook. Uh, I also play a little ogre in the audiobook. And uh, I was also the casting director for uh, both productions over at Sound Kitten Studios. Yeah, Marissa is the reason that, um, or like not entirely the reason, but you really were the champion for specifically kyle playing giovanni and danny playing molly those were the two i yes. got and you were like you better <laughs> cast them or i'll kill you <laughs> <laughs> yes and then yes yam. it's my turn yeah. hi i'm yam i was uh i guess the main text editor my name is on the book wow whoa hi hi would the EPUB be on something like Apple eBooks? Yes, it's supposed to already be there. It is not, <laughs> I'm angry. But yes, it will be out on like any normal eBook service. You should be able to get it. Anywhere, eBooks are sold. Oh, people keep asking also, I haven't seen it in this chat, but I've seen it, like, I see it a lot. Will it be in stores? Not this version for sure. Like this is not, that's Ingram Spark's big thing they advertise is they're like, this will get you in stores. But here's the thing. Um, after you put your price, you have to go, hey, offer a huge discount so stores can buy your book. Otherwise they won't. And the discount is like 50, uh, 55%, which means that like, you have to make your book bonkers expensive if it's gonna be a hardcover with illustrations. So uh, I attempted to do literally the lowest price I could for this version of the alpha hardcover, which was $50. That's the lowest I could make it because my profits are $1.50 per book. And if I go lower, it won't even let me. Uh, and that's with the lowest rate. I, that was like with a 30% discount. So um, no, this version will not be in stores. Maybe in like a year or so, but yeah. Oh, someone also asked, well, why did you start with this book if you're going to novelize season one? Because stores and publishers don't want a fantasy series that starts on book three, but also it would be very lame of me after two years of not doing anything with this series to give you a novelized version of the stuff you already had. I thought it would be better to give you this new content now and while you have a year of that i can go back and novelize stuff which i really don't think will take me that long also soto you've got occasional static going on oh sorry and oz just joined oz who are you what do you do who is this kid what they gonna do I am a goblin who lives in the bog. I forgot I had push to talk on. Hold on. Still going? Nope. Okay, we're good. Hey, hi. I don't have the actual stream thing up. I just came in and I'm in my kitchen. So if I sound a little weird, that's why. Uh, I am Trixie. That is me. I'm not just saying I voice Trixie. That creature, <laughs> the being, is me. And my cat's trying to eat an onion. That's Just like me for real. Classic. <laughs> yes. Listen, if he eats even one bite of this, he's dead. Who is drawing right now? Bo, our illustrator. Is the PDF only available on Patreon? For right now, yes. You can wait for the uh, the EPUB, but it might take another week. The PDF is there for people who want a read-along for the audiobook right now. The person in chat asking if the book is $50, no. That uh, is the nightmare scenario of... The the hardcover from this version of the website, this is the self-published version that would hypothetically be out this month, has to be minimum fifty dollars. That is not a choice I am making. That's that's the ultimatum for 
Uh, so if you want hardcover I'm, deliciousness. So I'm trying to get like a cheaper paperback option out as well. But I frankly, after what I've been dealing with this week, I don't trust this website to give you a professional print copy, especially where the illustrations are concerned. I've been yelling to Bo about it literally all week um, and being like, can you believe this? Uh, but <sighs> when the act, when the not published by me, real publisher version is out in like summer 2023, sorry. Um, that version will be cheaper than $50, I imagine. <laughs> yes, they're not paperback $50. And then there's a PDF, yes? Yes, the PDF is $10 on Patreon. The audiobook is $12. They are not sold together. They are separate things you are getting. You can put those together for less than $50. Yes. Have people gotten the free audio yet? Do you mean from Kickstarter? Uh, yes. You, you should have received a message. You know, there was a subliminal message there. If you merge those words, free audio, you get fraudio. So were we not getting more animated we adventures? I literally don't know how to make this clearer. There is no more animated epithet erased. Do not ask again. <laughs> Like, it's this thing where it's just, like, uh, people are going to keep asking that because, obviously, they can't, they, like, they just hop in and go, like, wait, sir, what? Animated episode erased? And it's like, no, chat, sorry. Chat, here's your rule. I know none of you are going to be here, like, the full 10 hours or whatever I'm on stream today. But if you, if, if you see something, say something. If you <laughs> see someone asking for more animated episode erased, tell them No. <laughs> Put it, on, Kill put, it them. On, put it on screen so they know that doesn't work <laughs> it, it doesn't work it's this thing of like people are like where do we get the audiobook and the pdf we have the audiobook pinned we have it on the screen that says audio audiobook and pdf out now links below and people still won't check so the best thing we can do is pass it on to your children so they can pass it on to their children's children and just keep keep spreading the word. Uh, there's Let no... it be writ in meager stone upon thy grave. Ask no more for no fucking epithet in me. Leave me no, alone. Please. I mean, Jello, I, I saw you when you were working on animated epithet. You were dying and it was very expensive. Yeah, no. So, like, chat, let's uh, let, let's have somebody who's not Jello tell you exactly how fucking miserable that was. He was a husk. That was detrimental to his health and his well-being and many other people, but mostly Jello. So you should really consider what you're asking when you ask for that sort of stuff. Because hey, you know we're content creators, but we're not fucking machines. All right, so. He lost his hands for two months. He lost his fucking I, hands, dude. I lost my hands for like nine months. It was a long time. Yeah, yeah, remember those look ma no hand streams? That was why. Yeah. Hey, you know who drew the art for look ma no hands? That was Sono. Me, <laughs> that, was me. that was me. It was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Is are you uh Bo, are you currently drawing Lori in a Molly outfit? No, this is a scene core outfit for Reagan. Who uh, asked okay. specifically for this? Oh yeah, feel free to uh, feel free to make suggestions, chat for uh, doodles. The thing in this book is that Lori can basically wear whatever outfit she wants with her power, and she's more or less a larper, so she can wear whatever. You can make suggestions. Oh, oh yeah, and we did pirate first because the uh, initial version of this book was going to be pirate and candy themed, but now it's now it's witch and candy themed. Oh, here's a here's a good question. Uh, how much of the book is self indulgent for Jello? Um, there's a non-zero amount of it that's just Great British Bake Off, uh, <laughs> to the point that like. They even call it the technical challenge. Like it's not pretending not to be big off. Love um, that for you. Yeah. You'll, you'll be able to tell the book is written by Jello. Don't worry, guys. There's a very long, serious monologue in the narration that uh, happens at probably the darkest moment of the book. And Yam's editing note was, yeah, nice philosophy, Jello. <laughs> me reading the taiga country history yeah it's it's a little 
Jello, you are a parody of yourself. That doesn't mean it's bad world building. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone, I keep like seeing good questions and then they're like way gone by the time I'm like, oh, I can answer one of them. <laughs> All right, everyone shut up one at a time. <laughs> no. no, more, more questions is better than nothing. Um, yeah, I thought someone else voiced Trixie. Um, Oz, Oz is going by a different name right now. So they like, you're credited differently in the yeah. book. That is correct, and that is a okay. <laughs> they so, shed their skin. They're different now. So Siv, Ryan, and Oz are the same person. No, I, I merely, I merely consumed the corpse. I'm just piloting the me the the meat suit. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Actually, someone asked it again. Can fans animate the audiobook? You are allowed to do any fan content with that audio. I hyper encourage that. Would love to see scenes animated. Tag the official epithet or ace thing on Twitter. I like I wanted I wanna see those. That's one of the reasons I was excited to do an audiobook. Oh my god, she looks so much younger and with her hair like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When will it come out in English? It's yeah. always in English. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they stop? <laughs> which version is best to throw money at? Someone like people were like, which one should I consume first? And I was like, I literally didn't even think anyone would like listen to it and then read it or vice versa. I figured you just do one or the other. Um, and after working, hang on, there's a really bad Animal Crossing song on the playlist that I want to change. <laughs> okay. Um, and after working on the book for so long and going back, like the audiobook, and going back to the normal book, I was like, this is really funny. Um, I think, I think there are certain jokes that work much better in both versions because like voice actors are present in one and some jokes read better than they work out loud just because it was written for a book. Um, I think... The audiobook is probably the best version because of the music, mostly. Um, the preview, I, I don't know if it works, but um, there is a preview on Sound Booth Theater. It's from the third prologue, which is the third chapter, because there's four prologues and then 13 uh, proper chapters for a total of 17. Uh, and it's Lori's introduction chapter with the dragon. And I did that chapter and put music in. I was like, this is amazing. So... The action scenes, the serious scenes uh, work way better with the voice work. Um, Danny and Tiana have some absolutely incredible scenes as Molly and Lorelai that you miss out on. Um, I think the biggest thing you lose out on if you are not reading it, uh, or if you, sorry, if you are reading it and you're not listening to the book is, I think Tiana makes Lorelai a little more sympathetic from the get-go. Uh, whereas the book, I think it takes a while to get her whole character through the text, but Tiana does a really great job with her. And she feels like a person rather than the worst. <laughs> when, in, when is it coming out in other languages? I have no plans for this getting trained. I'm just trying to get it out in English, baby. We'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah man. Be cool, what? but... Yeah. That's a whole process. Like, I I never translated season one, so, like... Mm -hmm. Epithet dubbed would be very cool, but... Uh, there is a, a Spanish fan dub where they got someone who sounds exactly like Danny to play Molly. It's oh, a little... Cool. It's a little bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually a good question. Will there be a Prison of Plastic soundtrack available for purchase? There are five new backing songs that get really used across this book. Um, the set, there will be another epithet soundtrack. It's coming out way later because there are even more original songs that we have to do as Kickstarter rewards. So um, we have already done the Beetlejuice cover, uh, the extended version of Great at Crime and Say No. We still need the extended version of the original opening deadline, uh, the extended version of Great at Cowboy, which is the uh, Western arc outro theme that Dawn sings as Zora. 
uh, that that's the one I've that's the one we're gonna do next because I've already written it and it's also the easiest. Um, we have to do a Giovanni villain song and a Giovanni lullaby song, I believe. Um, once all of those are done, all of them will go on a soundtrack and that will be the Prison of Plastic soundtrack. If it works out, maybe that'll come out around the same time as the uh, like polished book release. Someone keeps asking Jello, does Giovanni have a sonic plushie? He reads more like a Shadow the Hedgehog guy to me. I don't really see Giovanni as much of a sonic dude overall. Like Yeah. I think he's I think he's more of a generalized anime guy. I don't know. The the thing that Giovanni canonically already has is his he's got a Sailor Moon poster. <laughs> uh Will the audiobook ever be Morse and Morse code? Well, Morse. you see. <laughs> Morse code? Sorry, dude, I can't speak English. Morsed code? Morsed code? Please release in Morsed code. Zora's VA is named Dawn? Yo, revelations on this stream. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I can tell you the first names of every epithet voice actor. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Reveal. <laughs> Reveal. <laughs> Are there adjectives in this book? Yes, adjectives confirmed. Adjectives Yo! and nice. Uh, so, We're slowly uh, building up all the parts of speech. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, someone asks, uh, to what extent can Lorelai's epithet affect the real world? Could she just do things like make a barrier or turn something to gold? Um, so, to be honest, Lorelai's epithet follows almost the same rules as uh, Hiccup from my webcomic, who can pretty much do anything if he puts his mind to it, but he sucks. Um, the The general rule is Lorelai can do most what, like mostly whatever, but some part of her conscience or subconscious has to be focusing on it. So uh, she can't make food unless she like sits down and thinks about it still being food and being digested for like a couple at like a, a long enough time for it to go through a human body. Um, so you would not be able to get calories from any food that Lorelai made. So uh, I saw a lot of people who were like, Molly's supposed to be in like a bad family situation and she's poor, but like she's got Naven and Fenica who could give them money and Lorelai who could make food. And uh, all of those are addressed in the book. Um, yeah. Oh, so, wait, Zora, Dawn, her epithet is Sundial. Is this intentional? Yes, Jello went into the past. And named yes, Jello changed, uh, asked, uh, asked Dawn to change her name for the. Yeah. Uh, Aloha, I have a task for you. Please get Lorelai dressed as Dan Gansley. Uh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. Why is that up to Aloha? I, people are just asking, he's, like, because I'm- He's the mouthpiece for chat? Yeah, chat Cello named Dawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, deep lore. <laughs> I named all of my friends, like, I was eating some- I was eating some lentils, and I was like, yo, what if I forgot a letter on this? Hey, get over. <laughs> Friend 48, I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Really un unoriginal. He named two of us after greetings. <laughs> well, I didn't even read the full message. I, I'm not gonna read your full ass fucking message. I can get what's actually <laughs> useful from it. Like what? What the fuck wow. do you want from me? Aloha. There's, there's a thousand goddamn people in here. You want me to fucking pay me? <laughs> Aloha out here talking like I usually talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um You're not only the it. the mouthpiece of chat to jello it's also the mouthpiece of jello to chat <laughs> <laughs> that anger translator bit for the president yeah. mm. jello to aloha communication, communication. <laughs> um so uh, there's a lot of you here and i feel like every question has just been technical and ad addressed to me which like makes sense for launch day but um yeah. i feel like i should mention like at least for the uh for the actors here like um like yeah. we said there's one actually you can um if you want to check out the preview of the audiobook on a site that probably won't be exploded um you can listen to the first 30 minutes free also on patreon completely free mm -hmm. then the first six chapters are all up 
on Patreon for the highest tier, which is $15, which would also net you the book. So there you yeah. go. Sound booth is also not currently exploded. Oh, yeah. cool. For go, now. Go uh, explode it now. again. <laughs> go explode it again. Ill uh, so, uh, chat, if you look on the left, you can see uh, who's here in their name tags to see if they actually uh, voice characters in the book. Uh, one for uh, Marissa from Omega Magus. Uh, hey, Marissa, who do you enjoy voicing more, Stink or Ogre? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Ogre... Ogre was brilliant, but it took us, like, what, 20 minutes to voice Ogre? Yeah. Ogre only has a couple lines, unfortunately. Like, even though in my head, Ogre's on one page, I think, of this entire book. But you really do read him perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Is I'm very proud of what we got for Ogre. Yeah. I'm an Ogre. Um, I'm an Ogre. But Stink is my boy. Stink is my child. He is now in both epithet productions that exist and the intention i believe is that he will continue and that's special that's I, very special i'm very stink will continue <laughs> stink <laughs> will return <laughs> yeah. jello can you can you still get the stink shirt because i realized yeah. i never bought one. Oh fuck yeah yeah it's around i think it's on like teespring or something like that um oh, shit, yeah. it's not a real it's, thing it's the same place that you can get uh the epithet season one poster uh who is the heart here's a question for me and marissa uh and i i know the answer to this and i'm gonna bring it up because we're eventually gonna segue to this character in this stream who is oh. going to be the hardest future character to cast and the answer is mm. almost certainly indus's sister yes we've discussed this at length <laughs> for multiple times i told marissa i think like two years ago i was like here's what i want to do i don't know anyone who could fit this character keep a lookout for the next six years <laughs> um we are it's gonna okay we'll find her and, we will uh, find her somehow her name is moot uh and she's the one in the sunglasses at the very end of season one across the table from yumta she is in the book after Prison of Plastic as one of the antagonists. And I think Bo and I are going to design her on stream later. Like, we're going to try and sit down and finalize what she actually looks like. And I'll do my best to not just be like, just give me Botaro from, yeah. <laughs> from Golden <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> Fucking what? We've got to we've got to fill the gap. They just announced today when the anime is coming back, and it's in April. Oof! There's still yeah. time for me to what? be Botar. What? <laughs> <laughs> Molly G Molly adopted by Giovanni Wen. Who can say? You should read the book. Whoa! Mm. You. Mood is a she now. Yeah, Mood is a trans woman in this. And she's also a completely different character. Like, they're not the same person at all. From Ep Anime campaign Mood was literally a girl chan in paradise throwaway joke. So, like, what better character to completely change into something much more interesting? Good for her. Good for her. Oh, Bo, do you have a piece? Uh, a piece? Oh, it's supposed to be a place. Because uh, I can't read. Uh, do you have a place that people can see your work and get commissions from you? Uh, you can see my work on probably my Twitter more than my Tumblr at this point. I also have some old stuff put up on coffee. I am not taking commissions at the moment, but I might be honestly selling some charms again pretty soon. <laughs> Who is your favorite character design, Bo? Uh, so far I love Lorelei. <laughs> she is the one that I designed. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. yeah hey, that's, about that's it. a that's a good like. Let's give everyone a second question. Uh, like, what's everyone's favorite character? Just going down the line. Just in general, it doesn't have to be design. Can be any reason. And you can just my chunk. favorite, my favorite is Giovanni, <laughs> but I also love his design on the cover of this book. I like Mara. 
I like Mara. <laughs> we shake it. In the, in the sweaty, <laughs> sweaty boys' corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, All the Mara enjoyers it. raise your hand. I also really like Lorelai. The um. Also, on that note, I'm gonna uh, say I like. Uh... No, go ahead, please. Oh my bad, my thing's acting up here. I, I would say I like. I love Indus. Indus is a good boy. Oh yeah. Well, I keep pick. flip flopping. I keep flip flopping between who my favorite character is. I think right now it's Naven. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Winks at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Gross. <laughs> I like, I like Percy. Yeah. It's oh yeah, a... I also really like Rick. Yeah. Yeah, Rick. What a hard fucking question, dude. <laughs> it, it's. I like Feeny. A tight three way <laughs> between Rick Naven and the Spelling Bee, which <laughs> I think no one. I shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> you you couldn't you can say that, just don't sound so sexy. Oh, tight <laughs> three way. That, that is that is completely your interpretation of that, but uh, I, I might be the only spelling bee enjoyer. I feel like he uh, his. Oh, you know uh, what? I his chapter. So here's a really good like. Which version should I get, and why both are good? Most of the like text jokes work better in the book in that chapter specifically because it's a lot about spelling and letters uh mm -hmm. but the paul guyatt's performance on the spelling bee is fucking hysterical it's He's such so a good horrible little pedantic man and i really <laughs> just Quiet, I'm I'm into it. the the virgin mara simps versus the chad spelling bee enjoy <laughs> speaking Thank of you speaking, speaking of, of mara, mara simps <laughs> Lindsay is here hello oh. Hello, I'm trying to Bowman. figure this thing out because it's Lindsay. like so loud in my ear. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm I'm here. I'm just like, oh, look, my name changed. That's awesome. I, I changed it for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You help the old people like me figure out technology. You're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. I'm, I'm I gotta I gotta make this loud. Uh, not loud. There we go. Okay. I think I got it. <laughs> yeah, do you... I just come like busting in here like, hello, everybody. I'm here and I'm going to talk now. All right. Uh... <laughs> say, you want to say hi to chat? Hi, chat. I, I can't see chat. How do I see chat? Uh, You'll have to you... open the stream up uh, on like in your internet browser and then just mute it so that it oh. doesn't echo okay. for you. Let me do that. Oh, I'm so great at this. <laughs> Hello, chat. I'm I'm saying hi. I'm trying to find y'all. Yeah. You're saying hi back. Yay! That's awesome. Hello, hello. We're, we're saying uh, each of our favorite characters. Ooh. Who's your favorite character? Uh, all of them. I can't decide. It's all, they're all, all my babies. <laughs> all right. Someone says, congrats on voicing the best character in season one. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> my, um, one of my, I, I like recorded something with you this year, like maybe some song stuff for like the Beetlejuice cover or something and like yeah. over Skype. And I mentioned at the very end, I was like, oh yeah, by the way, the book after Prison of Plastic, Mara is the protagonist. And you were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. That's so fun. Does Ramsey show up at all in Prison of Plastic? No, he does not. Uh, the <laughs> there, was, there was this question I was uh, holding in my back pocket because I saw it. Uh, from uh, Tia Awesomeness in chat. Yeah, I'm saying your username. Uh, why is Lorelai just like me, but cooler? <laughs> Man, I I hope she's not just like you. <laughs> you. <laughs> just like me, for real. For real. Yeah, Lori, Lori is more like Denji in that image, I think, than anyone yeah. else. God bless. And then I Mal don't mean this in a mean way but that had the exact same energy as that one post that's like 
I just started reading Homestuck and I'm really excited about it. My friends keep telling me I'm just like Vriska. I can't wait to see her. Ouch. <laughs> uh. I did I did say I was like, yeah, Epithet Erase, very unproblematic fandom. All the like even even the villains are very likable. And I was like, I think Lorelei is gonna cause some posts, is what I'll say. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I do I do recall you referring to Lorelai as your problematic fave, which is a term I have stolen and yeah. used for many characters. I yeah. I think <laughs> in the way that like I think if I had to pick a best character, not my favorite, but best character, I would pick Molly. Uh, if you ask me who is the best written character in Epithet Erased, I would say it's Molly and Lorelai, because uh, there's a lot going on with Lorelai. But, like, also, she sucks. <laughs> Chat, don't be sad if your favorite character is not in this book. If the book does well, there will be more book. There will be more, more books book. either way, but you should buy this one uh, to give me money. <laughs> buy my book. So buy just my do book. it. Buy my do book. It. So he can feed himself while he writes inevitable more book. Yeah, it's it's yeah. actually more important that you give me money so I can pay Sound Cadence to get the voice actors money more than anything. That's true. You gotta pay those voice actors or else they won't do it. Yeah. We More like stink. money. So that they can feed and themselves as well. Every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Um someone also asked, uh, no spoilers, what's your favorite line? I like this applies to everyone, uh, because you can pick a season one line also. My favorite line in the set in this book that just came out is the one that always makes me laugh. It's really quick, and it's one of those things I wrote at, like, five in the morning when I was like, I'm done for the night. And I woke up, and I was like, I kept that uh, when I was reviewing it. There's this scene with Trixie and a bunch of crows, and they're, like, convincing the crows to do something. And the crows um, keep responding the same way where they're like yeah every single time they're very enthusiastic and they say yeah three times and uh what at the last time trixie says something they repeat it back so it says like line of dialogue they parroted and then in parentheses class traders because that's a different that is a kind very of, funny line because it's a different <laughs> type of bird and every time i see that i burst out laughing it's such a stupid joke uh one of my favorite things is uh I, there's many times in the book where it's just like you're just a prisoner. And then it's just like, <laughs> oh, 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 plastic. Yeah, Lorelai, uh, Lorelai, this is not a huge spoiler because it's kind of the inciting incident of the book and it's in the first third. Um, Lorelai kidnaps Naven at some, like Naven is the damsel in distress in this book. And um, at one point, Giovanni, who's also hanging out with them, uh, has moved Tiny Naven in his cage from one room to another. And uh, Lorelai's like, how did you get in here? And he's like, oh, I'm having, like, oh, Mr. Murder t showed me around. He's very nice, you know. I'm having a great time. And Lori goes, you're not supposed to be having a good time. You're a, pr and in the text it's just, you're a prisoner in the Herodin's hovel, which is like, Herodin is her character. She is playing this, the witch. Uh, and... But Tiana yeah. reads it as, um, you're not supposed to be having a good time. You're a prisoner. And every time I hear it, I go, of a plastic. plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I distinctly recall, uh, I, I think it was a blooper that I ended up sending you, Jello, but there's... You laughed really hard reading it, and uh, to give no context, I think the exchange is... Uh, oh, so the surface isn't usually like this? Oh, no. Oh, good! This sucks! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other okay. favorite ones from season one or two or whatever? Uh, I think my favorite line is from the Halloween stream, and it's just this script written by Brendan Flavor. Shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I quote that all the time. <laughs> yeah. It it's probably the the rat the rat cheese line. <laughs> um I I like Rick screaming Molly as if she had died. Mm -hmm. Molly. 
Yeah. Just a reminder, uh, if you spam your question, I will time you out and not read it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna, really quick, plastic. I wanna see if I can, is there a good way I can grab this and show this on screen? There's there's a small handful of like extremely silly uh, editor back and forth comments, either like from myself or from Yam. And I kept some of them even after the book was finished going through editing because it was like, hey, the, this is funny. And one of them is, there's a moment where Molly like falls over harmlessly into some snow and Rick screams like, at the top yeah. of his lungs, and Yam responded with this little vine of a guy reacting to a bear falling in a river and <laughs> screaming in the exact same way. <laughs> there's there's that, and at one point, uh, a chapter ends with Molly saying, I think I figured out how we can finally beat my sister, and I have a comment on it that just says, with a chair, <laughs> smiley face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's a question. I look you directly in the eyes, Jello. Uh, this is me, Aloha. Uh, someone asked this. Uh, will we ever meet Naven's wife? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, Good. Good. Love, love the reactions to that info card. Extremely <laughs> funny. <laughs> like, what? Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, I Love that 90% of Naven's screen time in this book is people bullying him. Yeah, ever he's not gay. There's there's this um this is relevant because of the game awards. There's this Jose uh interview, and I saw someone, and it turned out this was like a fake image macro screen cap caption combo they made, which sucked because I watched a 30-minute interview to find it. But uh it's this it's this picture of Jose talking to some interviewer and he's he like asks about a lyric in the song and they fake this response from him and he says well some men enjoy being pegged and then the guy responds can you elaborate on that no <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, that that's the image that pops in my head when people are like naven isn't gay <laughs> yeah uh, just to relay this to chat in an audio format, uh, Sambu Theater Live says, if there's anyone who's just sitting there refreshing our page over and over, that will keep people out forever. Please come back later to relieve the bottleneck. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah. Form a nice and orally fucking line. <laughs> You'll get your book. Don't worry. It's it's not going anywhere. Also, the audiobook is 10 hours. Like, even if you get it, you're probably not going to finish it. Also, sitting. the audiobook is terrible. No, the audiobook's, <laughs> no. the audiobook's really good. I'm like... It's great. Like, but you're also not going to start it while the stream's going. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't want to listen to it again for, like, five years. But, like, it's a really, mm -hmm. really good audiobook. Uh, editing audio is always awful because it's very YouTube poop where it's just like... Rrr! And the line goes on again and then you just repeat that to get timing right. Yep. I think it's also just a normal production thing. Once you complete something, you never want to hear it again. And then in a couple of years, you're like, aw, we did such a good job on that. I'll listen to it again. Okay, and someone, Naven's a twink in spirit. In spirit? He's just a twink. <laughs> He's just a twink. You don't have to be gay to be a twink. Yeah. That's true. Some people would argue, but they're wrong. Yeah. But also, Naven's a little zesty. Not gonna lie. <laughs> What, what do you ex explain? Twink with a twink with a hint of garlic salt. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought I, see apple. I thought you were gonna say like hint of lemon or something. So my mouth started synestheseing that, and then you said garlic, and it like completely twisted my tongue. Even though those are both good flavors, like I was expecting something different. I think Naven is zesty in the way that like toothpaste is spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard that said by anybody ever. That is great. I, I think more often than anyone on the entire planet about if a sentence that someone just said is the first time it's been said ever. <laughs> Let's see. Maven Remember is a little grapefruit, man. What? Oh, now there's a sentence is... no one has there said. <laughs> He's Grape... an apple. Grapefruit? He's His an animal. animal is apple. Is my spirit animal? 
Oh, I I won't get to like show this off for like five books, but you do get to like at one point the pet name that Naven's wife occasionally uses for him is my key lime guy <laughs> instead of key lime <laughs> pie. So I guess he's a key lime pie. Naven <laughs> equals ba uh, Basil from Amori. They really do have similar vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Is Granny Smith too spicy for Naven? Oh, it's not bad. It's just, it's a little spicy. This, this is mayonnaise. <laughs> I can just... <laughs> what flavor are you? Milk! Milk! God, I love I For a book, milk. I'd be two books. If I were a spice, I'd be flour. If I were a book, I'd be two books. Uh, I, think, I think my favorite dumb joke that I got out of listening to the audiobook with everybody was just a line uh, that's describing Martin that's just like, he didn't he didn't look like either of his two daughters. And it was like, he's white. <laughs> <laughs> I forget, like, that fucking cracked me up because like, I it's such an obvious way to read that, but it's not at all what I picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, not to spoil anything, but there's another moment that's, like, fairly intense where a character is talking about their backstory and, like, they're like, yeah, I stopped getting communication from these old people all around the, like, not old people as in they're old, but, like, old friends of mine. And they, 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 you know, and in the way it's worded, both of the people editing the book, Yen was the main editor and our friend Kenzie also did a little work on it and she read through it. Both of you commented, I thought they all died. <laughs> Like in all caps, and I was like, "Oh man, yeah, that's a totally valid way to read what I wrote." And then I didn't change it because <laughs> I didn't know. Cello scaring the shit out of everyone. Uh, from Noah Upton, how do you come up with epithets, and what was the most fun power set? Um, uh, also, does the cast have any epithets they would want? That's a fun question. Um, Healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Same. Uh, that just makes me Rohan Kishibe. That'd be great. Can I have God. boba, please, so I can have bubble tea forever? That'd be a good. Lindsay, you're aiming so low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd, I'd go for insight. I'd go for serotonin. <laughs> oh shit, good one, good one. These are profoundly <laughs> depressing answers. Every single it's like what would you guys do? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> is it is the epithets we want or would realistically have? That's true, that is different. Alright, I, I changed mine then. Slime. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that your want or is that your government assigned epithet? That's my government assigned epithet. Slime or like Ooze. Oh, you know what? A dust bunny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's see. I would do slime, but Nickelodeon slime. So it's fun. Gak? That's called Gak? Oh, sorry, I added the T. That's a dude. Never Gak. Yeah, no, that's a man. <laughs> It, it, like we change all our answers to whatever the, you have slime. Yeah, probably slime. Yeah, I want slime. this guy's wife. I also want this guy's wife. <laughs> your, your favorite, favorite Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah, Scyther. What's your favorite Pokemon? Scyther, uh, Scyther apparently. I'm told. Yeah, Scyther, I'm told. I'm told. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine would be Archive. Um, uh, uh, mine would be my uh, government assigned upset would be a uh, guy. Just a little guy. Just guy a little guy. Guy in parenthesis, just Lorbo. a little. <laughs> it, My episode uh, is decent. There's someone in chat, yeah. It was decent. So, was decent. Bo, because of the little Molly heads up display I've got here, it, like, Molly and your Lorelei scene drawing are almost, like, making the same pose. So it kind of looks like they're posing together <laughs> and, like, they have wildly different emotions. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like when your your siblings are like, let's take a picture together. It's like, no, fuck off. Yeah, it looks like Molly's like, no, don't take a picture of me. 
Does Giovanni have a rival whose epithet is charcuterie? Charcuterie is like a, that's a great epithet. Yeah. Like, the best oh, yeah. epithets are stupid. I, I said this on the last stream. Would but that like, be like, theoretically, if it was like the antithesis or whatever, would that be like a rich kid who's pretending to be poor? As the epithet of Giovanni or? or no, the, the charcuterie guy. Hmm, I don't know. Profound question. Uh, hmm. What? What you guys used to do for the TTRPG was you guys used to just randomize three words and pick one. Yeah, we would randomize three words. Um, so, like, Molly's Epithet, Giovanni's, Sylvie's, Indus's, and Mara's are, were all, like, decided by a random generator for their original incarnations. And mm -hmm. most of them were kept the same. Um, I had to change how Molly's powers worked a little. I, I gotta say... Like, including Molly in any fight is really difficult, and it's gonna be way worse after this book, because uh, this is the only setting in which her powers have special abilities. Every other time it's just like, I don't know, man. I shouldn't be, in I shouldn't be engaging in combat. I'm Molly. I'm just I'm a little guy. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. I can't get enough of that sugar crisp. <laughs> <laughs> That reminded me of another one of my favorite deliveries from season one, where uh, when Molly is back in the toy store talking to Percy, like pretending to be a hard boiled cop. It's yeah. Like, I, I forget what the exact line is. She's like, I don't have time to play games, detective, or something like that. It's How interesting. Good. Neither do I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Loved uh, when Molly went, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> is moist an epithet? Yes. Danny, Danny actually had a really good outtake uh, recording at like 10 p.m. yesterday, two days ago for that um the advertisement that just came out on YouTube. It was like, uh, oh my god, what did she say? Um, oh, uh, when, when instead of saying like get the hard copy of the book on uh the hardcover, yeah, what was it? Hardcover version on Ingram Spark, and she's like, "Get the hardcore version on Ingram." The hardcore <laughs> version. If you die in the book, you die in real life. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, "What was it?" If you, oh, never mind. I fucking lost it. But I thought the punchline was gonna be her saying, "If you get the fuck out." <laughs> <laughs> well, there was there was a lot of that when you were doing the like old eye not eye catches but like end caps with danny right jello yeah it's the original well, <laughs> season yeah, because like i was literally dying during the original and i was like i need verve tags for the youtube version so what whenever danny and i record molly at least one of us is exhausted which is why she's always recorded so well because it's very in character uh, so it's always like, hey, I need something. Can you do it in the next two days? And Jenny would be like, I've got one slot at 11.30 p.m. I'm like, let's do it. And we get there and we're both like, we love this show. All right, here we go. And then we record it and afterwards it's like, Bleh. but yeah, for, I had to wake up because the only time Danny had was like 9 a.m., which is like three hours earlier than I normally get up. And this is back in season one and I came into the studio because we came into suit. That's what we did back then. Um, in the old days. In the old days. And uh, we were recording with Danny, and I, she, she was like, all right, what am I here to do? And I was like, you need to do these little end slates at the end of the YouTube videos that are like, go check out the next two episodes available now on Verve. And she was like, okay, great. Where's the script? I didn't write one. I thought I'd just do it right now, which is why they're all so unhinged. It's just like, <laughs> hey, it's me, Molly in the Void. Give me your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, these work. I love those. Why voice act when you can voice real? I. That's like absolutely something that would be written on a whiteboard in like a really bad voice acting class. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm. Oh yeah. Awkward silence. Awkward silence. Oh yeah. so sorry. Ask uh, ask good questions, chat. Yeah, keep asking questions. I command you. I'm <laughs> uh, I'm I'm really excited for the next new book I get to write because um the main dynamic is gonna be Indus, Mara, and Ramsey, 
which I think is going to be really funny. <laughs> I'm and so excited. Speaking of Ramsey, I got to go and hang out with Will. It's your, is it your yeah. anniversary? Yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. All right, everybody. Anniversary. I'll probably be back later. All right. Have fun. Bye. Be good. Bye. 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 The, the fucking nerve to have an anniversary on this fucking sacred ass day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm well, I'm, Wyatt. I I got about five minutes, so you could be mad at me then too. I will for the rest of the day. I'll be muttering in the background with my mic muted about how Cyrus abandoned us. I I also have to abandon you in about four minutes, uh, but I will be back later tonight. What All is right. with everyone having really specific amounts of time that they have to? <laughs> I got about. I, I got. I gotta go get I've milk got about and cigarettes. Seventeen Doug. minutes and twenty-eight seconds. I, Aram, I was about to say I have about seventeen seconds until I have to leave. Um, Everybody, run now! Because I'm moving to a new place. Yeah. Is it like a what size of move? Is it like cross city, cross states? Planets. It's a. Uh, it's on the corner of the street in a four by four box. Uh, no, it's actually uptown. So yeah, cross city. Ooh. Ooh okay. Also, yeah. Did we just make the same sound? In a six by six box. Uh, yeah, d d Lindsay. I don't know if you've seen this art from Bo. <laughs> this is this is yes! an accurate preview. Have Have you ever seen short hair Mara concept? Uh huh. I okay. love it. Okay. I'm pulling it back up anyway. <laughs> yeah, me me having any excuse to pull up that art because like so often Bo will be like, yeah, I just had an idea and put it in front of me to bait me, and I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Stay Ooh. tuned for the next book, uh, Prison of Glastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a little while, yeah. the it was like this was going to be Prison of Plastic Part One and Part Two because both these books taken. Whoa take place in uh, an, a metaphorical prison and then a actual one. But I think right now the next book's title is going to be Sweet Escape. That's liable to change because uh, this book was originally called Sugar Cookie Jazz, much like season one was originally called Sugar Cookie Jazz. And then I was like, well, I just wrote this section and uh, I think this monologue's great. This book is called Prison of Plastic now. Yeah. Prison of yeah. Prison. Yeah, it's a great name. Prison of Prison. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> prison of Plastic, Prison 8, fantastic. The next yeah. one. Prison of Prison of Prison of <laughs> YouTube. Angela, when you asked prison. Cyrus about his move, I could I could hear the lingering trauma from your your own moving experience. Don't move. Never move. <laughs> I'm doing worst. that. I'm not moving right now. <laughs> sucks to suck. Oh no. Has Mara ever What am I meant to do now? Has Mara ever successfully eaten a tortilla chip? Unharmed? Probably not. Oh no. Her <laughs> teeth, they're gone. <laughs> Oh, gee. Aram and Aloha are like, I like Mara, and she smiles at you, and it's just gums like an 80 year old woman. <laughs> Can only drink smoothies through a straw. Damn. <laughs> oh, I just thought of an awful thing I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I handshake you. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> ne Neosi's in the chat and he says, Lindsay, you're killing me and more than a married couple love your work. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm hiding an embarrassment. Is it this is not for the children? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. No, I, I I love it. I I love that show. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, this like all the places hosting this book were like, Oh yeah, what kind of like is this book for kids or young adults? I'm like, it's it's for all ages. And I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, the word shit is in it twice. Is that okay? And they're like, yeah, like, if you're quiet about it. Like, <laughs> Jello. Jello. Yeah, like, if I you're not Mark. I put my hand on your shoulder. Chainsaw Man's in Shonen Jump. That's true. <laughs> How did they get away? So Jello, what have you called your book something really cool and not dumb like hot crispy dazzling? <laughs> 
<laughs> Shot busted, fellow adult. Shot busted. <laughs> Okay, I have to run away. I will be back in a few hours, though. All right, bye. And bye. bye. If I could figure out how to leave the thing. <laughs> the technology. Yes, I, I think there's a delay on my end, so I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. But uh, no, cool. yes, I will be heading out. All right. Thank you so much for swinging by. I Oh, I would not have wanted to do this in the middle of my move, so I really appreciate you taking the time. Mm hmm Absolutely. I, if I was... I, if I, the webcam was on, you you should see the disarray of what I'm sitting in. It looks like Fallout in here. But yes, <laughs> thank you for having me. And uh, if I have time, I'll see you guys uh, later tonight. Or if not, then I'll see you never or on Twitter where I should post. But yeah, you guys have a great night. You too, bye. You too. Bye, bye, Cyrus. You can hear Cyrus in Abathed Erase Prison of the Plastic, a book that you can get right now in some yeah. theater. Wow. I'm, I sound like a Homestar Runner cutaway gag. <laughs> That's your life. You can, I, man, I wish that was my life. What a beautiful... Uh, no, you know what? I'm... <laughs> I wish that was my life. Uh, Genie, make me uh, make me a Homestar Runner life. Genie turns me into fucking Coach Z. No, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was time now. Time enough at last. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, what the fuck? Just what, what is this thing? A book thing? It's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, there's that specific voice they do. It's like, get present of plastic, five ninety nine now on Sound Booth Theater. <laughs> it's like a recurring guy. Yeah. Uh, what's this present of plastic? It's is it a Lego set? It's a book. You can. It's an audio book. You can buy it right now. Man, you're supposed to be doing the stream all fucking day, dude. Oh yeah. Well, oh, oh it sucks. It sucks uh, for you. It sounded like a Freddy Fish character for some reason. <laughs> like a really specific one. Thank you, I got I put into jail because they think I stole the Prison of Plastic audiobook code. <laughs> 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 we'll oh, prove no. your inner thin Uncle Aloha. <laughs> All right, kids. I'm going to need three purple sea urchins to get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Brendan, I've been wanting to ask you this forever. Right, by forever, I mean since the last time you did it, but now that we're on stream and uh, I thought of it, can you please at some point indulge me in your impression of the uh, Sketchpad dude from Crashbox? Because I've been <laughs> thinking about it ever since you did it the first time. Oh man, I mean there's only one thing I know how to say in that character's voice. It's this... So there was this, for context, before I say the things I'm about to say, there was this <laughs> HBO kids show called Crash Box that was like a bunch of different animated segments. They were all like little mini games and quizzes and like brain teasers and stuff. And I watched it religiously as a kid, like every Damn. single day. And one of the segments, my favorite one was called Sketchpad. And it was a guy named Sketch who was like a beatnik. And it was drawn in kind of a sort of UPA adjacent jazz album art cover and the guy sounds like this and there's this one and he's out, like the gimmick is he's like here's a brain teaser what happened that I like he gives you a limited information puzzle and you have to figure out like what happened without all the information and there's a section where he shows you his things on his sketch pad and the guy goes through and uh, he's like you might think this is the answer, but that ain't it. And there was this bit I did with Keen. <laughs> that's one of my favorite bits I've ever done. And it's it's pretty crass. Um, so if you're like 13, pretend I'm not saying this Tends in front of you. not to understand. <laughs> oh, you, you, you'll get it. It's not, <laughs> like you don't need extra information to understand. It's just crass. Um, mm -hmm. They were doing that one like famous puzzle where it's like a guy is like a thief gets caught and is locked in like the the ice freezer of a restaurant while they go get the police or whatever. Or it's like some kind of situation like that. But then he's he's miraculously escaped and there's nothing but a puddle of water. It's like he used the ice. He he climbed up like an ice block out the window. And so but it's like 
This, uh, now this cat got out of there even though the room was locked and there was only a puddle of water. Well, what do you think happened? You might think that he just grew some wings and flew out through the window, but that ain't it. Maybe you think this cat smuggled in a key and used that to unlock the door, but that ain't it either. And maybe you think this guy climbed up on the ice and then it melted, but that ain't it neither. No, this brother used his dick to pole vault out the window. <laughs> and then, and then I, there's, there's no context further than that, but I said that once in front of Keen because we were fucking around and he lost his mind. <laughs> oh my god, that something about that exact delivery just tickles me. I don't know. It's because I also watched that show religiously as a child, so for it, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone um go, going back a little to not that and to um not quite Freddy Fish but Pajama Sam uh which is the same company. There's a lot of characters in this hum uh, humongous entertainment games who just like I love their voices and as an adult I like will do impressions of them in auditions and like like Riot's voice if you know him from the source material for Epithet um. And I've done this voice in professional stuff, actually. I think my paladin's character is this voice. But, like, in the third Pajama Sam game, there's this zucchini. And he's like a bro. And he sounds like <laughs> this. And that's a voice that I do now. <laughs> yeah, Beach Koga. That's Damn. it. Damn, that's crazy. Bye. Best time... new voices are just bad impressions of other things you've heard. Absolutely true. Uh, bye. Time to listen to your book. Thanks for listening to it. Uh, you can get the book on Sound Cadence. Nope. Sound Cadence made the book. You can get the book on Sound Booth Theater. Uh, There's a lot of sounds going on, man. You might think you could get the book <laughs> on audible.com. <laughs> you bet, But you can't. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's a good point. So there's a lot more places I'm going to put this this up on. I think the audiobook is going to stay on Sound Booth Theater. I like them. And it's, it's not that hard to get. Um... But uh, this people ask this, this book will never be on Amazon or Audible in any format. They're hyper predatory and I hate their business practices. I'm not giving them any, I'm not giving them a red cent. Yeah. You might think he's giving them a red cent, but <laughs> I hate it. You might think maybe he's giving them a blue nickel, but that ain't it. <laughs> Who made the background music? I mean, the one I'm listening to right now is Animal Crossing. So Toto KK. But um the music for the book is Plaster Brain did all the music. Same person as season one. Whoa. That's crazy. Will the Bonsai clan make an appearance in the book? Yes. yes they're they're all little <laughs> decorative trees. <laughs> yeah, it that's a really common mistake. It is spelled Bonsai, like the thing you yell before, like, jumping off a diving board. <laughs> like, bonsai! And then you, you hit the water. Uh, but yes. use Z, the empirically coolest letter. That's true. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. all uh, all the bonsai blasters from Giovanni's crew are in this book. What major character from season one do I think is the most underrated? I'm... I'm surprised how little stuff I see for Indus and Mera. I like I don't think I call them most underrated, but that's just a surprise for me. Um I love I think the character who is much better than he was written as due to his performance. I love Oliver Toll as Arnold Markdown. I think yeah. he's hilarious. He did a great job, yeah. I love the story of Oliver Toll as Arnold Markdown, may I tell it? Yeah. Uh, you gave me an audition packet to pass along to the actors um, that had, like, original art that does not look like the style that everyone is used to with Epithet. You it, can see it, those uh, sides on Patreon. Find them on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, they're on Patreon. And Arnold's artwork looked exactly like a character from Bacano. And so I just turned around and was like, do you want me to just get that guy, Jello? And Jello was like, yeah, actually. <laughs> and we got that guy. Yeah. I wish Oliver was in more. I think he's really good. Yeah, I agree. I, 
I think he spends most of his time as like a TV personality and uh, doing improv stuff. He, I rewatched some of the Name That Tune streams from the Kickstarter release week about a year ago. And the one that Oliver is it, he's so funny. <laughs> He's so funny the whole time. And this was a really great clip you could previously see on Twitch, but now you have to hunt for it in the main video. <sighs> um, where uh, we get to the end of the anime songs, and I was like, I asked my boyfriend, Jay, to give me some really obscure anime that no one will get, including 700 people in chat. And, um, like, we played the song, and it's like, huh, all right, that was it. That was Bazinga Star Blazer or whatever, a real show that apparently exists. And uh, yeah, now that means the person who's in last place gets three points since no one got it, which means now Oliver is in last and he just goes, what? No, hang on, I'm in last place because your boyfriend gave you a made up anime song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice guy. I love it. He... Man, uh, I think his his Twitter handle is Mr. Nice, and he has an electric smile. He he just has an enormous grin. Lovely fellow. Will I upload that vod to Jello Plays Games eventually? Eventually. Oh, eventually. Aloha finished uploading all the old Ace Attorney videos, and he was like a a man freed from a hundred year curse. <laughs> Fucking, I never want to look at Ace Attorney ever fucking again. Hate that shit. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they'll they'll be up eventually. It's just like, uh, we're in the process of trying to get monetized. So last thing we want to do is upload something that'll give us a hundred copyright claims. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Asking you know, again, you... sorry, but Molly's wiki says Martin wanted, quote, to give his daughters unique names, which is why her full name is so out there. What's Lorelai's full name? Laura Linebacker Blind Deaf. <laughs> Good lord. Linebacker. Wait, I that's can't believe it's, That's canonical. The, oh. The craziest thing is how that's still, like, at least a full order of magnitude less ridiculous than Molly's. <laughs> yeah, um... Their, it on that one. Their mom, Calliope, would pick their name, and then their dad would be like, let me spice this up. <laughs> so, on their birth certificates, and at the start of every year in class, the teachers going through are like, what is this? <laughs> is, is someone this a playing joke? a prank on me? If I remember correctly, Molly's is Molly Wally Doodle all the way. Why? Is she played. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's like either all the way or all the day. I forget what the actual term is. Um, I always thought it was all the way, but apparently it's all the day. Uh, hmm. why? She plays lacrosse in her info card. That's football. She didn't go like, well, my name is Laura Linebacker. I guess I have to be a football player. I'm pretty sure both of the girls are like, I'm ignoring the fact that's my birth name. I want to, uh, Soundbooth Theater is in chat and said, uh, just a reminder that their app is working fine just now. So if you want to buy the book and the website is not working, the app is also an option. Yeah, crash their app. Let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This can't go bad. <laughs> Would Molly ever straighten her hair? I ask as a half black girl who still struggles with her hair point blank, period. Um, Molly's hair. We have some like plans for like future design alterations. Um... I've never imagined her with straightened hair, actually. I bet Lorelai straightened her hair a couple times, though. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was what I started this off with, and I was like, eh, I don't feel like fucking with that yet. So I gave her braids instead. Is Trixie ever jealous of Giovanni for having an epithet? Probably not. Yeah, Tr Trixie has knives. Trixie... Trixie, this is said in the book, Trixie is under the impression that she actually has an epithet and hasn't figured out what it is yet. And that's why she can talk to ghosts. Oh, Here's some old Molly haircuts. Look at those Mollies. Whoa. Oh, I love these. Neosi says, Molly's one of my favorite designs ever. I agree. I Molly has a design that makes me want to, like, pat her head like a like a muffin or a doll or something she just looks very squishy <laughs> like you do to muffins you don't you pat, pat muffins them. yeah leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> S 
someone asked ages ago, what did I learn from writing this book? And just because this is the only, like, area I feel, like, completely... I don't need to be humble and congratulate myself. Uh, I learned I'm a really good writer. Like, I'm such a good writer. <laughs> it's, I just be built fucking different, chat. Okay? Literally, like, every other thing where I'm like, I'm an okay actor. And I'll be like, oh, like, even if I... Even if I have, like, critique of an actor, I'll be like, I don't know about that choice, but maybe it was the direction or whatever. Like, I've, like this is why I have zero sympathy whenever I'm watching something. I'm like, why didn't you get someone good to write it? It's easy. <laughs> Just be good. Couldn't be me. You. Is this going to be a... Is this a tiger-striped sweater? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Bless. I saw... It was, like... um some Someone was, like reacting to Lori's info card was like oh her ex she, like they all had joke fourth stats and Lori's was extra and it was five stars and they were like that witch's outfit is not very extra and I'm like extra is a personality <laughs> this is yeah. extra this now this is extra oh god if you were given the okay to write a Scooby Doo movie what would it be about Scooby Doo probably Whoa. Jello, I was thinking about this the other day because I, I went back and watched it, but what are your thoughts on the supernatural Scooby Doo crossover episode? It's is, I don't know if there's I have it. seen it. It's not bad. Um th that's about all I remember. Like it was it was a fun thing for the gimmick it had. It was like, alright. And you get to see like I don't know. I don't remember exactly what happened, but like at one point Shaggy jumps out of a, a like a second story window into a tree or something and he lands in it. But like cartoon rules are off. So he like breaks his leg and he's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I desperately need to know who Naven's wife is. Please, Mr. Apocalypse, you canonize it and I'll bug you about it till the end of the stream ends. You'll find out in the next book, maybe. Or the next book. Or the next book. Keep watching, asshole. Would Lorelai have a DeviantArt account? Absolutely. Yeah. Lorelai, Lorelai makes, uh, like, she's a she's two decades too late, but she would just do nothing but make DeviantArt, what were they called? Stamps? Signatures? Like those stamps. Oh, yeah. The stamps. He's bringing it back. MySpace page looking ass. Fucking... Lorelai watches Death Note and is like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Dresses like Misa for a month. Yeah, oh, that, that's great. That's when she would straighten her hair, for sure. Does she make sparkle dogs? I mean, she is one. <laughs> she is a sparkle dog. God oh, bless. God bless. The real lawyer. <laughs> the fucking Mara's Mara furry lore. <laughs> Man, what a what a delightful reaction that was. Ah, uh, sometimes Lore Lorelai's definitely furry. Harley Quinn for Halloween. No, she's creative. Hmm. <laughs> like I don't have anything against Harley Quinn, but that's like a that's like an I had five minutes and just saw the first costume in Spirit and bought it Halloween tier costume. Would I consider other forms of media like comic books? Not right now. I don't want. Yeah, why don't you make a web comic? No. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm tired of doing. Oh, that's a fun question. <laughs> Who'd each character be for Halloween? Like, what would their Halloween costumes be? I mean, Rhea did some art uh, during the first season that I think is pretty accurate. That's kind of funny. She made Molly a witch. Um, Giovanni the electoral was a, college. Giovanni was a Dracula. Sylvie and Beefton were Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. Ramsey was a pirate. I don't remember what Percy was, actually. Um... What we've seen, Percy would be the gum under someone's shoe. Gum shoe. God. Uh, I, I, you said Halloween, and my instant was like, stink would be Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like stink uses all his energy on the night before Halloween. Yeah, like egging houses and TPing places. 
Stink would just dress up as a giant egg and throw eggs. And then if people come out to yell at him, he's like, look what your house did to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> so Chad, use the farts, Luke. Yeah, okay. Now, now I can see it. <laughs> Hanging onto the back, just like, yeah. Oh, yeah, this so comic good. Bo and Speyer did for Halloween. I, I lo- The best part of this comic, other than Cheat Feeny, uh, is... I'm in love with the idea of Giovanni's boys dressing as Giovanni. That's so yeah, funny. funny. <laughs> Can I propose Stink dresses up as Yoda, but it's specifically uh, Lego Yoda driving a tractor into a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I got the idea to draw Stink as Billy Hatcher. I mean, I feel like Lenti is the audience for that. <laughs> really true i'm the only person i knew who owned a copy of billy hatcher and the giant egg bless i owned it i remember liking that game oh good i had a used to love that mode. game i'd pop it on play multiplayer with people and they'd be like what game is this and i'm like don't worry about it the best game uh <laughs> Did you manage to fucking archive the Omicon 2 low and stream is still at large? I mean, maybe you're that something, one's, bro. That one's up on YouTube somewhere else. Like, yeah, someone um, else. That's that's I, the reason, by the way. Hey, if you know someone who has a uh, YouTube channel where they uploaded our content, cool of them to, like, keep it when uh, Twitch blew up everything we have, but, like, tell them to take it down because Twitch literally thinks we're bots stealing other people's uh, content. YouTube, yeah. yeah not, sorry, I just so used yeah, to yeah, that Twitch. Yeah, Twitch, yeah. YouTube, we tried to, like, monetize our channel, and they were yeah. like, no, this isn't your content. Look at all these other people who uploaded the same video, and it's like, girl, <laughs> it's awkward. We, we, we record, we, they made us record a five-minute video of Jello in his, like, explaining why we own the content and he's the voice in the video and all this other stuff and they were like not good enough fuck you and we were just like oh uh-huh, man and so we had to wait like another month in order to monetize like try to monetize again so we, we've been running the uh vlog channel at uh, net loss uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's true yeah it's true yeah oh man the, the hair i love that anyways naven is pretty yeah <laughs> and twirls my hair <laughs> I wanted these raccoon stripes in my hair so <laughs> badly when I was a teenager. I always, no. when I was that age, I called that haircut skunk hair. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know scene was a thing. The skunk scene. Wait, what happened with Twitch? God, I wish I were you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> God, me I emerging from me. my... God, I fucking wish that were me. Me emerging from my rock at the bottom of the ocean. Like, oh man, me waking from my coma. I can't wait to watch Jello Apocalypse on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he finished his fucking Ace Attorney Let's Play. You going? Where, what happened? I, Fraud, baby. Man, I hate to admit she kind of rocks this look. Yeah, yeah she does. <laughs> Isn't that 2014 Tumblr girl hair? No, this hair predates Tumblr. This is MySpace hair. No, uh, someone who's only watched Tumblr. Is this Tumblr? <laughs> getting a lot of Tumblr vibes from this. You know, they're getting a lot of Tumblr vibes from this. So is Naven just jello as a jello twink. Jello as a twink. In, in, in my own words from like yesterday, someone was like, is Naven your self insert? It was like, I legitimately don't think we could hold a conversation with each other longer than like 10 minutes. We'd have nothing to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Also, Naven is the freakish height of 5'7". <laughs> it's height of 5'7". <laughs> it's been a delight to, after, I, I've been talking about this with Yam as a fellow tall. Um, It's been so wonderful after years growing up being like, Oh, I love Naruto. I'm watching all the cool anime fighter guys. I really like. Oh, let's look up how tall they are, and he'll be like, Daidara, one foot two. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm six five. He can't be one foot two. I squish him like a Mario Goomba. <laughs> and and now I get to be like, this is my my series now. <laughs> Every. <laughs> 
Also, please every like character dog. is a giant bestriding the earth. Like, I don't even think most characters are that tall. But five people... seven is not giant. <laughs> yeah, I'll kill that's you not all. what I was implying. <laughs> I, I get so upset because I'm like five eleven, and then someone goes like, "You're like a manly," and I'm like, "How tall are you?" Oh, six foot. Shut the fuck up. That okay. one mate, six feet, five eleven. Five eleven, <laughs> and it's just like, look, you can't call me short or manlet unless you're like fucking six four and up. Okay, I have so many people, tall people around me, real tall people, not a faker like you. Okay. Fuck yeah, you. that was that was my immediate reaction to Naven's height was seeing someone call him a manlet. I'm like five seven is not a manlet. <laughs> he's like he's like a little like I was like he's a little short and. What I did for a lot of those character things is because I was like, I'm I'm six five. Everyone to me is shorter than me. So I had to get a tape measure and put it out along a wall and go, where is everyone in my brain if I have to look at them? Mm. Which is how I decided most of them. I like I think Lori is taller than Naven, which is really funny. Yeah, she's five nine. <laughs> Fucking Ugh. just fucking being called a male after being five eleven, I'm pissed. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah. I had a I had a coworker who was he looked taller like it, the effect was accentuated because he was also kind of lanky but I would guess he was like six seven ish um, and like I was aware he was a tall person I had seen him plenty of times but on a rare occasion when I was actually walking directly beside him in the hall for a while I kind of stopped and was like Christ you're tall <laughs> yeah we <laughs> no. we get that. <laughs> Wait, wait. Most... I heard your height is 700 times, and I assumed it was a joke, but every time you say it, but you're actually 6'5", yes. Why uh, would I jealous. joke about that? For what, height clout? <laughs> like, yeah, that's suffering. Race making as tall? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. It most... was real, it was very real, though, when we met for the first time in person, and you walked into my studio, and I was like, oh my god, you're so much taller than I pictured you to be. Yeah. yeah. I feel like... Um, disappointed I've ever been in someone. It was one time I was working and a guy walked in and he was very tall. Like he was like maybe he was like broaching on seven feet tall. He was huge. And I was like, whoa. So I'm tall. He must get the fucking, oh, you're so tall shit all the time. I always think that when I meet a tall person. So I'm just talking to him like normal. And then he looks at me and he's like, you're pretty tall. And I was like, yeah. He's like, how tall are you? I'm like, really, man? You're gonna do this to me? <laughs> I thought you. What? what? I thought you were an <laughs> ally. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were a kindred spirit. I know you hate this. <laughs> to your, you must get it all the time. Why are you doing it to me? <laughs> he, he just wants to feel it. He wants to feel something. Also, the way that you set up that story, I was like, oh yeah, when I met Jello, he was taller than expected, and then you went, the most disappointed I've ever been in a person. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I told Yam I was 6'5", and then I showed up, and she was like, 6'4 and a half? Yikes. God. Don't. 6'4 and a half? I've been catfished. <laughs> <laughs> someone someone asked a while ago what height did stink right on his first driver permit six foot nine he can't even get his first driver's permit yet this crayon <laughs> yeah, like one of my close personal friends is six eight and I will not take shit from anyone. But, I I uh, met I have a photo of us. That's a rare photo of someone next to me who's taller dude, than me. So it's fucking hilarious because uh, due to Jibo's nature, uh, Christian took a picture of Jibo before we even knew each other, right? And then like showed it to Jibo, and he's like, "That's fucking creepy. I hate that." <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I would also hate that. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, Jello, we have this picture together from five years ago, and you're oh, like, Oh, the fingerless glove! <laughs> uh, this design just keeps getting more and more baller. It was every second. I used to wear those. I, I love her little tattoo choker, too. And the two-toned, yeah. like, stripe jacket. I don't... Yeah. <sighs> I just see this design. I'm like, I don't know if this girl smells good or bad, but she definitely smells overwhelming. 
You know what uh, she smells like? She smells like very overpowering, like target perfume. Yeah, like the the Bath and Body Works like, gets, like yeah. spritz. I I can smell this picture. <laughs> the, like watermelon spritz that costs like two bucks. Oh she smells God. like that mixed with like hot Cheetos. Oh, good. Um, you're right, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> Going out on town with the besties. God, one of my favorite pieces of fan art is a. Uh, um, I always forget if it's tuna fish. <laughs> I know fisk which or... one you're gonna say. I don't know if you do. Uh, okay. There's... okay. Maybe. Um, there's this. There's this one that um, is it tuna fist or tuna frisk? I literally always get it wrong. Tuna fisk. Tuna fisk. Um, love most of their stuff. I don't know why I said it like that. I love, like, they're one of my favorite fan artists. I love most of their stuff, except, uh, so they did this one drawing and it's like their AU Lorelai hanging out with Giovanni, uh, clearly crushing on him in like a Facebook photo. And she captions it, ha we look so much like a couple here. A couple of besties. <laughs> I was like, yep, that's, that's their dynamic. <laughs> I, I will note, I did in fact know. All right, I give you thirty dollars. Thank you. <laughs> you can buy so my book up. now. <laughs> Whoa! 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 Oh yeah. Uh, was... It's sorry. It's been. I should like start every at least twenty minutes plugging this. Uh, books available now on Sound Booth Theater. If the website's not working for you, you can try the app. Also, it might be down because there's a million people trying to get it. Yeah. Or you can get uh, on Patreon if one of you guys wants to link it in chat. Um, yeah. Yo, thanks. Hello. Huh? Sound Booth Theater <laughs> is currently up, so you can go get a copy. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, don't constantly refresh it. Just come back later, man. Wait in line. Just like, you know, you know what? I'll check it out an hour and then it will be working. It might be working, man. Yeah. Yeah. While you're waiting, you can hang out with us. Yeah. yeah. And then buy his book, buy his book, buy his book. Buy my book. Buy, buy my book. <laughs> buy my book. Buy my book. <laughs> I was going to say, it started off drawing her shoes, and I was like, I should give her those fucking uh, knee-high converse that are big and seen outfits. And I'm like, wait, Giovanni literally wears those. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are my pronouns? He, him. I got damn the the classic. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it, it, it's the fucking uh, like American Psycho like card scene, but it's just like you know, pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> mm, classic. Huh? Nice. 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 <laughs> Very impressive. Vintage pronouns. I can't believe Aloha thinks Jello's pronouns are better than mine. <laughs> Hang on. Let's see Bo's pronouns. Let's see. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my oh my god. god. Oh my I pull out two cards. <laughs> oh my god. The he and the they. Like an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Uh, everything okay? <laughs> Time to crash Patreon instead of Sound Booth. I have actually been like trying to update stuff on Patreon in the past, and it will just like crash on me. It's been all right. Lately. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> Marissa's Love pronouns, started... according to Discord, are stink slash ogre. Yep. I mean, <laughs> technically true. <laughs> I I use any, so I guess that's fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I produced an infinitely replicating stack of business cards. You, you hand a Pokemon holographic card that changes pronouns when you tilt it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. God, why it's gone aren't from, my It's no longer cards Patrick that? Bateman. It's become There's Solid Snake. Ego, <laughs> ego after Solid Snake. Yeah. Specifically, specifically, the way he says, oh my god, in reaction to Paul Allen's card is a very David Hayter read. That's fair. <laughs> oh my ego, god. Ego, Raptor, Solid Snake. Oh my god, hotness, I want to bang you. <laughs> That's my niece. God, the, the fucking blue thrown into this is driving me bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> there's 
this reminds me of um in the book the a lot of scenes take place in a room called the cauldratorium and uh it's like a potion place with a cauldron and a lot of potions and it's initially described as like oh like the candy sweet stink of potions exploding all around you because like all of them are candy flavored and uh it's just like walking into a wall of nose blindness it was like smelling an exclamation point and she just matches the oh my god the shirt you know you know what Lorelai would be super into do you guys remember I don't know what it was called but it was like a mid 2000s thing it was like a little trend Hot Topic Skeleton Animals No not that there were was these it bunnies? the bunny the rude bunnies where yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were they called Happy Bunny Happy Bunny Yeah Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Man. Jello, do you prefer Brenton Apocalypse or Jello Blaber? Jello Blaber out of those options, because it sounds more like Sans Undertale. Brendan Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. is Brendan Apocalypse sounds like a one-season WWE failure. <laughs> yeah. Brendan Apocalypse is the, the yes. hottest new alt punk band, dude. <laughs> We did have a conversation about that, yeah. We had a good conversation. I, I, I think uh, you're referring to the rabbits. Those took over the Rayman world. No. no. <laughs> um, Happy Bunny no. is older than rabbits. Yeah, Happy Bunny was like what all the kids when we were in middle school was were putting on their binders. Yeah. Like here, I remember, I remember being in elementary school and I knew a girl that was obsessed with them. Oh yeah, thank yeah. Thank you, Sono. Just link the exact image I was going to. You want to you want to throw that in there for uh, for comparison's sake, bro. Sure. These are not rabbits, bro. These are no. something far deeper, something far more primal. Just badly edit that onto her shirt. These <laughs> were like minion memes before minions existed. But but they were like yeah. memes for like like teenagers, not for like moms. Yes. Yeah. Brandon Apocalypse sounds like a name Giovanni would think of when Scraps money, <laughs> the money he wrote, wrote I think it down. The on moment him. he wrote it down. The moment. Well. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God. These were popular around the same time that those like close-ups of animals looking at the camera were popular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not to channel lamp here, but the, during the pawn and Z era, the I made you a cookie, but I eat it, it little like blue <laughs> like and the, yellow. Like the sad original uh, I can has cheeseburger kind of time. Like, yeah, like I was looking at chat like before the stream started, and someone was like, I heard you like mudkips. And I was like, what fucking portal did you hop out yeah. of? Dude? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Lori, Lori strikes me as like, I could see her having a TikTok and being like, I was born in the wrong era. I would have thrived in the mid 2000s. And like, honestly, she would have. But like. Yeah. Heard you like mud kips. Oh, yeah, no, she was. Uh, you would have had. Uh, heard you like mud kips. Uh, it's over 9,000. Like all that shit. Chuck Norris. Fire in my laser. Chuck Norris. Yeah, fire in my laser. All your base. Yeah. L losing the game. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. The game was in full force when I was in high school. Yeah. yeah. Motivational posters. Craig of the Creek episode about a high stakes version of the game when. <laughs> <laughs> what character would describe themselves as an alpha? I need to know. Bugsy and no one else. No, Zora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay, you might her... not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Zora would describe herself as an alpha, but like mean it in like a way where she literally read it off of like a shitty incorrect wolf fact book the second time in her life she read something and the last. Uh, Bugsy would get it off of like really misogynist YouTube videos. Bugsy is a moderator on r slash red pill. I don't think I'd go that far. Oh uh, yeah, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have slandered it. <laughs> Listen, he's not a great guy, but let's not go overboard here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, fly off the handle there. <laughs> what is our more, red you have pill? more of a Don't MGTOW. 
are there any epithets I would avoid using, like murder or genocide? Yeah. Genocide? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. I, I don't think I'd use my genocide epithet. How would you find out you had that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hopefully what? reading about it and being like, man, this really speaks to me, but like in a neutral way. <laughs> <laughs> like conceptually. 4chan couldn't be an epithet. It's a proper noun that's not used in any other context. There are rules. <laughs> so like Photoshop and Xerox and Zipper and Frisbee can be epithets because those are all words. And like Google could be an epithet. Uh, but like Bing wouldn't be an epithet. Like you don't Bing something. All right, what? Didn't you ever watch that episode of CSI Miami? No, <laughs> I didn't. Okay. It's, they just had some of the most uh, extremely obvious bought for uh, product placement ever. Like, all right, yeah. bing it. They didn't really they say did that, that, did they? They, they did. did. They did that in Vampire Diaries. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> Draw Molly getting a full eight hours of sleep. Actually a good <laughs> suggestion. Yeah, I should also be like doodling stuff and taking suggestions. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's so realistic. <laughs> I I can't wait to show this to Tiana. I think she'll really like it. It's it's so funny recording with both Danny and Tiana cuz like I like the both of them have very specific energies. And Danny is more like her character than Tiana is like hers. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, but like, like Danny, Danny is like a, a little, like if you've ever watched our Night in the Woods streams, you can hear a little of her. Like she doesn't, she doesn't swear. She says like, oh, farts and oh, fudge. And she's like, very, 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 very pleasant. Uh, and Tiana, Tiana has like a different kind of witch girl energy. She's like standing in a corner of a room being like, yeah. Those are my potions. <laughs> like, <laughs> Perfect. Diana once gifted me a candle that was carved with runes to get me a specific outcome in my life. And that's one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever gotten from anybody. And then she asked if uh, she should burn it for you or if you wanted to burn it yourself to activate its powers. Yes, and I asked her to burn it for me because my cats are stupid and would put their faces directly in it. And she did. <laughs> and then it did work. Nice. Uh, which is the scariest part. I was and like, they never found the body. <laughs> Tiana, your powers. I'm back. Yeah. Tia Tiana's very strong. Tiana's one of those people who, like, has, like, ambient 2 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 energy, and there's not a mid-ground. I've only Tiana's <laughs> yeah good. Uh, Tiana's the only voice actor I've met who, at least that I'm aware of, who actively listens to Death Grips, and that makes me pretty happy. Oh, you know, I I'm ninety percent. I've never like asked her about this, but I did. I was how do I phrase this? I was like, wait, did this happen? Uh, and I looked into it, and I believe the answer is yes. So I used to do this Bacano Abridged series that has since long been copyright struck from the internet, though you can get it on my Patreon along with our book, Epithet Erased Prison of Plastic, available now. Uh, but I was like, wait, some of those Lorelei sessions and Tiana's mannerisms felt really familiar. Did she voice Rachel in the first couple episodes? And yeah, she did. <laughs> so I've actually worked with Tiana before. <laughs> Wow. Almost exactly the same as Molly voice actor lore. Well, that one I knew because uh, that that's how I met both um, Danny and Wyatt when I was like, that was like, oh, I need to hold auditions. And also I was making something good that time. <laughs> um, whereas early Bacchano Abridged is quite awful. I, someone I found jello because of Bacchano Abridged. Wow. Me too. Did you actually? Yeah. Oh my god. 
<laughs> I didn't. Thanks, Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, how yeah. did you find out about our stuff? Uh, about our stuff? Oh, fuck. Um, it was, uh, God, I think you just uploaded, like, fucking, so this is basically Overwatch or something. And, uh, that same day you posted, like, the announcement for, like, anime campaign episode four, which was the card game episode. And it had that Civ art of Giovanni. And I was like, yo, that guy looks cool as fuck. Uh, and I got baited into watching anime campaign and got uh, into uh, the anime campaign fan discord uh, and then eventually ended up here. And uh, Oh yeah, yeah. chat, uh, not to interrupt Aloha, but uh, yeah. pick, pick a new Lori. Oh my God. Oh, they're picking. They're picking. New to branch Lori. Can you, can you zoom in a little so they're more visible for a second? Scroll by them all. Because the, the mermaid one obviously stands out. No. Can't zoom in. Eat Dead. shit. <laughs> I think someone, both stepped away. Yeah. Someone in chat earlier said Miku Lori, which I would be super down for. Oh my god. Aww. With the leak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Jello, I think I found your stuff through the Welcome To series, and it gave me a jump scare because in the fan fiction one, uh, Chula says, like, my name is Marissa. And I was like, oh, because <laughs> it's such an uncommon name. I never hear Marissa used as like an example name for anything. You always say that. And I knew like, and like, I remember uh, when we met, you're like, it's pronounced Marissa. And I was like, yeah, it's a common name. And you were like, no. Uh, and I was like, really? Because I knew like five Marissas growing up. Never in my life had I met another Marissa up to that point. Man, that's wild. It is an uncommon name if you are me and you have grown up with everyone calling you Melissa, which is apparently the more common <laughs> version. Mm. Marissa Tome. Tome. Yeah, ever Tome. Tome. Yeah. I, th I thought ever it was an exclamation since, point. Ever since working <laughs> with you more, Marissa, you're you like you as a person have replaced the default Marissa when I think of the name Marissa as it was previously the one from Toho. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is that Lenti stole the precious thing. <laughs> yeah. Cut. Air, uh, wow. uh, There's a fucking we're right back in Mudkip times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just I did finger guns. You couldn't see it, but I'm sure you could tell. Oh, hey, Chula in the chat. Chula! That's every time I put on my Christmas album for my friends around this time of year and Christmas Caramel Donson comes on, everyone takes psychic it's damage. It's really good. It's a really good song. You've heard of Elf on the Shelf. Now get ready for Chula in the chat. <laughs> Chula in the chat sounds like a magic treehouse book. Yeah. <laughs> Chula's in the chat. Cherry <laughs> shouts Chula. Here, wait, Chula, let me mod you for no reason. I just want to give you power. And also it makes you easier to see in chat. Yeah. Nope. Yo, singing dog, Lorelei. You're right, chat. <laughs> the truth must come out. <laughs> I'm trying. It's Oh, it's because I'm trying to do it from the OBS interface, which is not actually YouTube. Yeah. Oops. Honestly, Lorelai conjuring Dog Raimi, totally in character, I think. Yeah. Plaster was very amused in chat by the, by the, it's all about me, deal with it, rabbit. <laughs> oh, Bo, are you back? Uh, chat wants yes. Miku, Lorelai. That has... That really uh, matches Plaster's energy in that I could see her wearing something of that aesthetic, and it's really 50-50 on, like, is that ironic or, or like, not or both? <laughs> Vocalory. Damn, that's good. Yeah, I think probably oh. that, that pointing one. Mm. Oh, and I yeah. feel like I feel like I could see Lorelai being firmly in team cringe culture as dead. <laughs> I think she's some you know what? 
God, this is a weird comparison to make. Stick with me. I'm going to do a jello tangent <laughs> to get to my point. You know how sometimes you'll see those news articles where it'll be like, like right wing politician in this country who made a bunch of laws that like made it hard to be gay, found to be extremely gay in a gay yeah. orgy or whatever. I think Lorelai is that, but with the cringe culture is dead and like kill the part of you that's cringe debate where she's like, come on, that's so cringe, like, all the time, but then it's just, like, unapologetically, like, yeah, it's cool when it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Rhea just put some art in the Discord. Aww. <laughs> Misa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just pictured Molly as light, and she'd actually be quite dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Molly is light, Feeny is L, the quickest version of Death Note. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Gives actual name. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with the exact same scene. It's like, hello, my name is L, and it's like she dies. But instead of instead of being like that was a that was a prisoner of plastic who was on death row, and we use them to narrow it down on this broadcast, it's just L is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. Do, 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 do. You should uh you should show off the Raya doodle if you haven't already. Oh yeah. Give me just a sec. Raya has trouble troubles, the problem troubles with Discord. Um <laughs> troubles. That's that's something Molly would say, actually. <laughs> um, so she can't hop in. Have you had a chance to look at any of the narrator bloopers yet? I, I skimmed over them. Okay, because I think they're very funny. I couldn't... Are we... The, oh, God. The, Are the we reason... to hear those? No, I'm gonna... The reason I chat. asked was because... Well, uh, I guess I'll ruin one blooper out of the Patreon rewards, but there, you try to say Finica, and I think you say Fingerka, and it, you're like, I just imagined the worst creature, and I, <laughs> I, I think about it often. <laughs> My epithet is Prubbles. <laughs> Caviar or Prubbles. Barney, you gotta stop eating my Prubbles! <laughs> Barney! God, another name that stream epithet moment. Uh, Zach, who plays Majin. We were doing Flintstones <laughs> jokes, and uh, while we were waiting for someone to get back, and Zach can do this like, really visceral, <laughs> Wilma! At the top of his lungs. It's like it sounds like he's ripping her apart. <laughs> I just I mean, want to say you said Zach you meant... who plays Majin. <laughs> yeah, I think you meant Sylvie. Yeah. Zach is a he has many layers. <laughs> like Zach how Robert Downey Majin. Jr. played a character playing a character in Tropic Thunder. Zach who plays Majin and Majin who plays Sylvie. I... Uh, at the beginning of one of the one stream, we used to have like uh, Majin used to be like I'm C Cookie Courtney, oh, yeah. Majin who plays this character. <laughs> yeah, I so. think uh, I think Majin introduced himself that way on the last one of these. Actually, <laughs> Cookie Courtney lives forever. Say, Tail. <laughs> wake up! The world is mine. Sure is, <laughs> Risa. God, it is. I actually didn't listen to any Miku shit for a long time because I found specifically the world is mine to be really aggravating. And I was like, ew. And I, I just assumed all Miku songs had that energy. Just is it like the, the tonality of it or just the song itself? Um, More just like the subject matter. I was like, what a bitch. Because <laughs> oh. I thought Miku was like a character, not like you know, a tool people use to show off their songs and animations. And I was like, oh, is she always like that? Ew. That is the worst. World is mine is not a reflection of my values. Yeah. Ooh, do any of the main cast have a favorite book series? 
I don't know enough books to answer that. I mean, man mangoes count, dude. None of them like Harry Potter. How about that one? <laughs> yeah. Good anti-answer. Would love to take that opportunity to pitch a really good book series that no one has ever heard of before. Do you Except, I mean... Uh, I do not, uh, which is fine because I could not do it anywhere near as much justice as the actual narrator does. But um, uh, it's called Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians, and it is about uh, the main character's name is Alcatraz, and uh, him and his entire lineage, who are also named after prisons, um, have they have powers not unlike epithets, but instead of being like a soul inscribed word, their powers are just really dumb on paper but like really incredibly powerful in practice so like the main character alcatraz's power is he can break stuff um and then he's got like a cousin whose power is that he can trip and fall over and like he's got an uncle whose power is that he gets lost really easily which translates to like he can teleport and will <laughs> um very good book series highly recommend good job Bob. I, I swore you were going to go <laughs> Uh, there's this really great book series. Uh, nobody's ever heard of it. Uh, you can get the book today. Epithet Erased Christmas Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Terry Pratchett? Uh, I wish I knew more of Terry Pratchett. We listened to like two thirds of one of his books as an audio book driving to move me and Aaron. Yeah. Uh, and that was a good time. I, I just started... I've just embarked on my long quest to read all of Discworld after only reading a couple books scattered throughout it uh, as a kid. And I just finished the first one recently and I was like, wow, you can really see proto Terry Pratchett here. There's all these ways in which I know that he's going to grow and develop from this point. I think if I read this book and and had never heard of Terry Pratchett and had no other history with him, I don't think I would read another one. It's but it's kind of fascinating to be like, here's the your favorite author. Here's what they look like before twenty years of writing experience. Mm. Hmm. Stink with Someday. like Captain Underpants. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> in his, his realm of uh... someone, someone in chat can't wait for the Magnus Scrota call. <laughs> I don't think that's how it's spelled. <laughs> oh, to everyone in the voice call, what are your favorite franchises? Any franchise at all? You hear the creak as I look at Marissa. <laughs> don't be mean to me. I keep looking at you. It's Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> Digimon is my favorite franchise of all time. I could talk uh, about it for hours. I assume we're talking about like intellectual property franchises and not like a fast food franchise. I was, yeah, I was whatever. Top six on McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> whatever pops into your head. Sure. <laughs> no one else has any favorites. Mm, I, I don't I'm know. How do you get to pick a favorite? What? Well, damn. Uh, I guess. I would go with, I guess, Xenoblade with a big asterisk beside Xenoblade 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's um, footnotes there, but I won't get into it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. There's Can almost move? nothing that's like many installments where I like all of them. Crusader Yeah, Kings. that's, that's what I, I guess. was going to say. I don't really like believe in liking a franchise because they often shuffle between creators and then the vibe is different and it's like that's not what i like so this might blow up chat but uh big moomins fan i do i do love the moomins oh that's fun Aww. <laughs> uh uh i don't know i don't like things it's got <laughs> Damn, guys. What's your least favorite <laughs> franchise? Ah, <laughs> uh, Epithet Erased. <laughs> <laughs> knew that no one. hesitation. What was, was Bo's worst job working for Jello? Oh my god. This <laughs> <laughs> one says, I have a dumb idea. If you had to combine a My Little Pony character with each Epithet character, what would the combos be? I'll be right I, back. Why? I, I assume you mean the main six. Um... I I think 
I think I'm gonna assign Pinkie Pie to Finica. Mm. Feeny's not that crazy, but like no one else is that bubbly. Oh man. Finica's somewhere between but, that and, and Fluttershy, right? And yeah. Finica and her family canonically throw crazy parties, right? So that's that true. That's works. true, yeah. Um also Bryn Bryn just sounds like a My Little Pony. Um man, there's not a lot of other good <laughs> Molly Fluttershy. <laughs> I guess Molly is closest to Fluttershy, yeah. Um Rarity Lorelei. Most of these are stretches. Uh Rainbow Dash Giovanni. <laughs> Someone suggested Mara Rarity, which because they're, their personalities are not the same, but they definitely have the same design aesthetic. Sure, I'm fine with that. There's not rarity. a good thing for Rarity. Um, even though she's best pwn. Could see, God, and then Applejack. Oh, Zora, I, Apple you Jack. caused me psychic damage with best pwn. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just now recover? Oh, yeah. bro hoof, my comrade. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, that one that one post that's like word of power to instantly send everyone. <laughs> I don't remember what the third one is, but Bazinga every pony and <laughs> just like a Skyrim shout of three words that are just things that people go, ah. <laughs> Damn, I don't have the songstress art saved, so I can't keep this joke going. <laughs> I'll... I should be able to grab her. Wow. Yes. Stink would be Spike. Stink is one of snips or snails. God, That's Stink sure and Stunk. Exists. Stonk. I was curious about it, so I looked it up, and according to Tumblr, it is... Uh, the, the shout is Bazinga every pony and hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. Here you go, Bo. Yay. She's more blue now, but. Yeah. We kept trying to do purple, but these are all in CMYK, and CMYK does not like any of the interesting purples. You said someone said Indus Big Mac? I'm like, like the burger? <laughs> <laughs> there are two barriers on either side of the meat. <laughs> yeah, the only joke here, Chaz, is that when Jello was first pitching new ideas for Songstress, I just send this image every single time. <laughs> Be nice to me. <laughs> Inside you, there are two barriers. Who is my favorite character who wasn't originally from anime campaign? None of them. I'm not about adding characters to this. I'm adapting them away. <laughs> I pull out my revolver and shoot Dan Gansley. Not a single tear. Truly exactly the worst. Exactly the correct number of tears. <laughs> Truly the worst to ever play the sport. Who's my favorite Amori character? Probably Aubrey. Yeah. I felt bad. You know Aubrey and Lori? They hold hands emoji in some ways. Aubergine? Aubergine. <laughs> Aubergine, Aubergine is such a cute name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and you can uh, eventually... Uh, see that shit uh that will be uploaded onto jello's uh vod channel where you can see him play video games like every monday he does night in the woods and shit so you know who else yeah. does that uh yam our editor along with ramsey's voice actor trixie's voice actor and molly's voice actor yeah uh it's really fun would we ever get a flashback scenario where we see how characters discovered their epithet Read Epithet Erase Prison of Plastic. <laughs> Woo! Oh, no. Which you can buy now. The audiobook and PDF are out now. Where can Woo! I get to the audiobook and PDF? The links are below this video, my friend. Why, it was the Model T Ford made the trouble. <laughs> made the people want to get, want to get, want to get up and go. I So I asked Kyle, I was like, I need to eventually write a Giovanni villain song. What do you want me to do for that? And he was like, I just got done 
with a Music Man production. And I would love to have a Giovanni Prattle song. And I was like, oh my God. Boy. What Perfect. a what a challenge. And I was like, that sounds amazing. And I started writing it. I'm like, holy shit, this type of song is hard. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say Kyle Ignazy, uh, a delight to see on stage. We went to go see him in a children's theater production where he was Jack Frost. And it was delightful. And we got to sit in a little box, uh, kind of in our own section of the audience. And then I, I got a call from the theater, like, I don't know, a couple seasons later. And they were like, what what would we have to do to have you come back to our children's theater? Like, what kind of shows are your kids looking for? And I'm like, I have no children. I was there to see Kyle Ignazy. And they were like, oh. <laughs> So more Kyle Ignacy, please. Yeah, I was like, tell me when Kyle's back on stage. They were like, we'll do. Thanks. Someone asked, what was Giovanni's by awakening I'm going to be honest, he has two moms. So I think like he never had to be introduced to the concept of liking your own gender. I don't, I see Giovanni as an extremely unromantic, unsexual creature who just goes through life very neutrally and excitedly. And... I don't think he's ever given it any thought to why he wouldn't like a boy. Bye by default. Also, like, if I had to... And I do, like, I do think of that type of thing, like, because I'm I'm very fascinated by, like, the moment of, of a first... Per like, the time a person is first like, oh, this is a thing I like. I can't imagine... If Giovanni had one, honestly, the equivalent would be, like, watching the Lion King and him being like, oh, Simba. <laughs> <laughs> what? <It> just <laughs> what? It just it will be kind of thick, though. Yeah. Uh. Uh, everyone's by awakening in the Lion King, though, was Kovu, so. What the fuck are you saying to me? <laughs> Is that the one half guy? That's the second. That's From the, the second, second movie. movie. Yeah. Simba, not Scar- Like, I'm just saying, I know a lot of people who are like, were really into Simba or Nala as kids. Like, they had a crush on them. Not even yeah. furries, just like, oh, I like that character. Someone in chat, Simba's a lion. Yeah, you think that fucking stops people, homie? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're on the internet. You're gonna learn this eventually. But that ain't, that ain't stopping no one, homie. No, I do think it's true that when you're a kid, a character being an animal is not a factor in it at yeah, all Yeah, especially you. since mm -hmm. they, they, like, personify, like, all of them and make them very human-like. So it's like, you're like, whoa, that's just like me for real, for real. And it doesn't make you a furry, because when you're eight, you're just like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's a cartoon character. Like, that's it's a not, cartoon. It's not a sexual thing. It's just like a puppy crush on a character. Beauty and the Beast Cogsworth, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's one I've never heard. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what would be the most unlikely poll? Yo, where are my coggies at? Is that a slur? Yeah. It sounds like it might be. <laughs> this is just reminding me of a TikTok I saw a while back that was a costume party themed with, like, your first crush or your sexual yeah. awakening. And there were two people. It's like, Sonic. Sonic. Sonic as well. There's a guy dressed as Danny Phantom. It's like, yeah. Someone in the chat says, Giovanni's by awakening was realizing he can like girls change my mind. Yeah, no, I, that's believable. <laughs> that's very funny. Love that. Okay. Wow. So I'm trying to invite Chula because I thought she might just be swinging by. Chula's allowed to be in here. Invite people. Chula. Uh, 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 what are you doing? I don't know. I'm looking at the chat box, right? That you have all the things on stream, and I'm like waiting for something like that's not supposed to be shown to be shown to be like, wow, Jello, you just shared the invite link to the server. Now there's 20 other people join. And it's like, no, fuck. And I have to nuke the server. Everything goes to shit. E, e. Hell's Kitchen episode. Yeah. I can only imagine G there is this fantastic piece of art that's Giovanni w cooking for Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I 
I wonder if I can find it. It's really good. Um, wish you warned me sooner about not reading chapter seven in public because I did start crying in class. Stop reading the book in class! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you guys have some fucking problems because there was someone in the fucking uh, uh, posting to the official like episode of race thing is like I'm gonna skip my class for stream and it's like don't do that and then it's just uh, don't read in class don't do all this other stuff pay your fucking attention to school homies what would I've Molly think mul I've seen multiple people saying like waiting up for the midnight and release and being like I have a final tomorrow. <laughs> Like, guys, 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 the book no. will be there. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> who, who's gonna stop us from reading it in class? Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hi, Chula. Come... Hi! Chula's here. Chula, Hello. Chula who are you in relation to this? Soon. Who are you in relation to this franchise? Tell the chat. Oh, hi! Uh, I was one of the original players of uh, Anime Campaign. I played uh, Goro. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Love that. What did your What did your Goro sound like before he was played by Ari Ross instead, since oh, you God. were not a man? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think you're right. <laughs> just a, Just a little guy. Yeah, just just a little birthday boy. Oh, oh uh, yeah. When um, oh my God, she's so <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna oh stop God. Molly Blindieth? <laughs> no, like, I I need to make an like I should be drawing this in the background, but I'm like I'm afraid if I go off of the because randomly yeah. Bo's stream will just disappear if I don't have it set up in a specific way. So I'm kind of scared to draw anything. Um, but I really do want to draw a picture that's like reader, uh, like just, you know, one of those like labeled things, except it's drawn from scratch and the main protagonist just walking along all happy as reader. And then there's epithet erased prison of plastic chapter seven. And it's like someone waiting in a bush with a baseball bat to like hit them in the <laughs> knees. And then a follow up image. Uh, that's like someone recovering from a knee injury. Like, glad that's all over. And then behind them is a person cocking a gun and it's labeled chapter 12. <laughs> oh, man. I still Lifers. love getting a response from Reagan, who I always refer to as our the OG Millie Blind Deaf and Lorelei Stan. Just getting a message from them this morning being like, I just saw that picture. I hope you explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jello, you're making me scared. You should be. Ah, um, I'll field this just to keep people talking, though we do have to be careful with this question. To all the voice actors in the call, what is a franchise you want to do voice acting for? Uh, you tend to not want to show too much of your ass when it comes to this question and be like, God, I'd love to do this, but would like to do a Fire Emblem or a Trails game someday. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, to keep it safely non-specific, uh, the, the kind of media i am most interested in voicing in would be role-playing games and i think probably jrpgs uh even though i probably play i enjoy playing western rpgs more for the most part but nah yeah a good jrpg a good character in that mm, that would be tasty i see I don't, I don't mind throwing this out there because i I somehow have a feeling it won't happen, or it will be a million years until it does, but if Katana Guitari ever got dubbed, I would nah. love to be in that show. I would love to uh, <laughs> engage with that show again, as long as they delete uh, the last episode and the last 45 <laughs> seconds of the penultimate episode. Oh yeah, I forgot that uh, I separately but like mentioned Katana Guitari to Wyatt. He was like, yeah, and I was like, oh, you're the first person I've ever heard besides Aram, who has strong opinions on that show. <laughs> it's funny, because my strong opinions are the opposite. I love the way that show ends. I, ca I can't fucking stand it, man. <laughs> I, I love that I immediately drew Botaro and someone's response was, is that moot? <laughs> uh, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. I want to wanna be a monster in any of my favorite monster shows. Ooh, I wanna, my dream. I want to be where the people are. <laughs> we haven't, you know, that Lori is to the left. We haven't done her yet. She's a mermaid. That's I want to be where the monsters are. I do. I do. Wanna Terribly. talk a loogie? <laughs> and I, wow. Surprisingly hard to come up with a rhyme for loogie. Surprisingly? Oogie. 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 I, I want a loogie and walk down and boogie. Chat. <laughs> I heard Marissa say, I want to be, and immediately went, the very best. Yeah, that would work for them, <laughs> I think. Uh, it would. That's one of the franchises. Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Metabots, Zoids. Well, all made. the like old cartoon franchises uh, that have been getting all the good forever are, are out of New York, aren't they? For the most part? Not anymore. Oh. I didn't the know that. The New York voice acting scene has dried up, uh, which is very sad. Because um, it used to be all like Broadway performers doing all the VO, which I thought was really cool. Spectrobes, that's a good one, Chad. Oh my God, Spectrobes, God. Oh, Monster Rancher. Things uh, that are never getting another installment ever again. I'd yeah. love to voice act in. I mean, Monster Rancher got the, the kaiju thing recently. Someone, yeah, but that's not Monster Rancher. Someone asked, someone... are there any coupon codes for the audiobook? Yeah, uh, you can get it for just eleven ninety nine if you use the coupon of a $10 bill and then two $1 bills, which is quite <laughs> cheap. So go do that. <laughs> someone in chat is talking about Cubics. <laughs> Cubics? I, I, Cubics? I, I, I'm... At, robots for everyone? Yes, robots, Recent robots for, everyone. for the PS1. I, I'm physically recoiling at the memories I've unlocked by looking up and looking at Cubics. <laughs> so to Arnold uh. Markdown trying to be slick. <laughs> yeah! I saw someone mention too. Just, I don't know the context of it, but it was just, Lorelai Monster High? Yeah, she would. She would. <laughs> she if you buy two copies of Epithet Erase Prison of Plastic, you will end up with two copies. <laughs> wow, what a steal! <laughs> oh man, hey, Bo, can you can you zoom out a little bit so I can like screen cap? what you've like all the lorries you've drawn or maybe just like focus on the pirate one and the scene one and then i can i'm gonna grab it and i'm gonna be like look at what we're doing oh man is there, is there a way i can full screen this well you know what someone can someone else screen cap the the actual stream while it's like that and then just yeah i got it. you thank you Someone in chat asks, have any of you considered doing horror vo and i want to tell you guys something no voice actor gets to choose what kind of stuff they do. They don't go, I'm considering horror, and then you get to do it. Even the voice actors in Epithet, it's all happenstance and good fortune that they get they get the audition, and then they book the audition, and now they're in this. Well, that being said, oh, I mean, no. there are, voice actors might decide, I'm not going to do X, though it, rarely that would be a genre, but I know there are some people who are not comfortable doing certain subject material or age range or whatever. Yes. So um, you can only opt out of things. You can't opt into things, basically. Are the plushies ever coming back for purchase? No. That's why we say they're not coming back for purchase when we sell them. Thank you, Aloha. You're welcome. My cursor's vanished. I can't believe Jello implemented Gacha fear of missing out mechanics in his <laughs> plushie manufacturing. <laughs> Whale for your plushies. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, that would be the next time you do a, a plushie back, uh, Kickstarter, be like, so we've actually sent makeshift 18 different designs. You cannot specify which one you want. Just so order a number of plushies and we'll send well, you a those, random assortment. But some are harder. Blind boxes. Blind boxes are so stupid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
Let's be for real, real. Anytime any epithet thing has any sort of production hamstringing, like it only lasts for a certain amount of time or it's a certain price, you guys have to keep in mind that Jello is one man. He's not a corporation. He's not a company. <laughs> the fucking train trolley problem. <laughs> it's the best quote ever. Where we did a trolley problem stream and it was just like, would you, uh, you're on the track and then the, on the other track are five clones of you. What would you do? Would you pull killing the five clones or let it just kill yourself? And Jello was like, at least if the clones were alive, I'd have five people I can fucking rely on. <laughs> 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 and I stand by, like, the best part of that is that the instant that one came up, we all went, oh, easy. And then you two simultaneously went, kill the clones. And I went, I die. <laughs> <laughs> Because you were like, I'm worth three people, not five. <laughs> I think yeah, it's I mean, my turn similar... to make my uh, my dramatic exit. Oh. All right. Thanks for swinging oh. by, Wyatt. Hello. Bye, Wyatt. I'm glad I got to Hi. see everyone's beautiful voices. See them. <laughs> see them. Uh, Bye. See them. I, I know what I said. Bye, Bye friends. Bye. 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 A similar concept to when people ask, "Oh, why, why no more animated content?" And it's like, mo money was required to make that happen. Yeah, yeah and but company also sized like, money. Money, like it's like, and then people go like, "Well, like, what, we, you could have a Kickstarter with the money that it would require." But it's just like you also got to think like the mental strain of it, right? Mm -hmm. Making this audiobook is like less mental strain than. Make, then managing an like an animated like thing where you have to control like twenty different people like a fucking puppet master, you know, like you need to realize that Jello was doing most of like the overhead and also doing a lot of the work himself because he's too much of a perfectionist to let anyone else do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's not easy. Like Jello, we give you the money and then it just you send it off to other people and they do it. Nah, dude, Jello, Jello, fucking is involved with every part of the process every step of the way and even doing things himself so it's like is that not the exact opposite of the lesson of the book <laughs> <laughs> so i think there's a reason that the theme resonates with our friend jello <laughs> i so, smile <laughs> someone says hey jello how surprised were you when people almost made it to the animation goal I'm not surprised at all i placed it perfectly i landed exactly at the amount i wanted and i spaced it out exactly so you'd never get to it you fools <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was so it was funny when that hey jay it was so funny hey. when that kickstarter went up and immediately was just hoovering up money like a black hole. And yeah. we were all, like, everyone was really happy. And we were like, hey, Jello, what are you going to do if they hit that animation goal? And you were like, probably die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, hang on. Let me, I'll have to open it up, but I bet I can, uh, a Kickstarter. Give me, let me look at these stretch goals. I can tell you the, like Marissa often tells me their long game strategies for different like projects they're working on. And they're always like very puppet mastery, but about things that are like niche <laughs> and silly. And uh, this is me getting to do one of those. Oh, I can't see the exact prices. Okay. I'll just have to guess. Um, so the stretch goals, I did one batch, all of which I was like, these are pretty easy. And the biggest one was an, a new animated opening, which just came out today and you got to see it. And, um, People were like, like that got funded, I think in 24 hours. And I was like, okay, well, it would be nice to have more money so I can do more things. And on the first one, it's like, audiobook will be produced. That's not a stretch goal. Uh, it's, that's the goal. New opening song, wanted to do that anyway. New outro song, wanted to do that anyway. Still need to do that one too, actually. Um, full music track, wanted to do that anyway. Kind of regret doing it, given it added like two and a half more months of work. But uh, that's how it be. Um, the anime campaign one and two edited and re-released is the one I was the most like, oh, and I have to do that. Hardcover prints. So sorry. <laughs> hardcover and full color cover I already wanted to do. Animated opening. I was like, yeah, that'd be nice. And then Molly and Geo sing. I was like, okay, Danny, 
Danny and Kyle have, and I have wanted to do a Beetlejuice song for years, and Danny already got the sheet music officially. We'll do that. New poster prints. I just take the season two, like the the not season two, the cover, put it on the poster, and I'm I'm done. I'm amazing. We did it. Extended season one OP. We already got it. Extended Cowboy ED. We already got it. Just make it longer. F one through four novelization. I was gonna do that anyway. I'll split it into two categories. So it's the Western arc and the other arc. Why would I only do one? That's insane. <laughs> Um, Giovanni Lullaby, Finica plushie was already gonna do it. Great at crime extended, uh, same deal as the other ones. And then the shit on the orange one, which is the third batch, those I was like, now these I need to be careful with. So, because each Kickstarter stretch goal is not like, oh, if you get us 10,000 more dollars, then we have enough to do this stretch goal. That's not what it means. It's like, oh, after five stretch goals, after all of these, most of those cost $500. This one costs like like 12,000. So I need to have way more buffer, but you can't just make that jump or no one will go for it. So I started slowly stretching out the prices between each one longer and longer. And they went from like 10K each to like 20K, 25K. And then at the end it's 50K. Uh, so we're less than, we're less than a hundred thousand dollars, like, no, we're more than a hundred thousand dollars away. It was like 120,000 from the animated OVA. And I was like, listen, I think maximum we're going to get like 300k. And I, it, it did exceed my expectations, but I was like, I'm going to fill it up with villain songs because songs are fun and I can release them whenever. Uh, and I'll, I'll stretch them out. And I was like, we're never getting that OVA. And the Sono, you can attest to this. I, when I was setting this up, I went around, I was like, hey, everyone who worked on season one, you worked at like small boy rates because we were all dying and I had no money. Give me what you'd want to come back and do this again. And to my surprise, everyone was like, I'd love to do more Epithet. And I was like, really? Why? <laughs> um, makes you, why, damn you? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, I literally, it didn't even occur to me that I was like suffering more than anyone on that. Uh, but like, um, and I was like, no, give me your real prices. Don't cut it. Give me an industry rate. And everyone, like some of the uh, animators were like, okay. Yeah, before it was like, God, it was like, I don't know, uh, 12, uh, 1200 a day of work. Uh, that animation was really expensive, by the way, even in season one. Um, 1200 a day of work, and after two weeks of like seven animators, that'd be like, uh, I owe you guys $25,000 every two weeks. <laughs> ah! Um, and I was like, yeah, give me your real prices. And <sighs> immediately someone was like, oh, it's about twice that much now. And I was like, great, awesome, awesome, awesome. Then I can reasonably put the quote at over $100,000 for one episode. And I still think that's lowballing it. They'll never get that high. Eaten <laughs> 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 you audience, I declare victory. <laughs> Eat shit! Uh, it would have been funny if they reached that goal and you would have to eat your shoe. <laughs> yeah. No, Even... Just put it at, at like a hundred million dollar goal, I will eat a shoe. I also, would, uh, I would rather uh, eat a shoe than animate than another episode. Has, has Jay gotten to say hi to stream yet? Hi stream! Hi stream! Jay, you want to tell them who you are. Jay entered in the middle of it. You can yeah. you can hang yeah. out for me. I have to go play Yu-Gi-Oh. Later, uh, Earl. Bye. 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 I'm play Yu-Gi-Oh right now, man. What a Hi, man. I'm Jay. According to uh, my 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 status in the Discord, I might I tap my nose have a line or two in this book. I tap my nose again. <laughs> who did you who did you play in the original? Uh, I played Rick Shades in the original. He's, uh, he's, he's my boy. Uh, I'm really, really, really happy with how Jello's written him. He's, God, he's so freaking good. He's so pleasant. <laughs> I love him so much. He's so good. He's... You did so good with him. He's voiced by the same guy who voices, like, the main character of, like, Final Fantasy XV, Yeah, he's right? voiced by Ray Chase. Yeah. Ray Chase, That's yeah. crazy, bro. It's fucking wild. You guys and are voice big brother though. near. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We are voice actors, you're right.
Yeah, I, I just DM'd. He's not around. He's literally driving through Arizona right now because uh, Ray Chase is always going somewhere, like physically. <laughs> uh, but I was like, hey, the original Rick's in here if you guys want to meet. So maybe Aww. we'll get lucky and he'll stop at a gas station. Uh, but <laughs> no no promises. It's, it's very funny because 90% of the time I recorded my lines before the... Um, uh, the actors, like, my narration, uh, and with, it's, I did a pretty good job being like, like, oh, I kind of know about what Finica will sound like, and I can reflect her a little in the narration, and be like, she bounced, or whatever, mm. uh, and with Rick, it's funny, because you can hear me Im imitating Jay's version of Rick, <laughs> uh, it's like, some strange creature of the deep, where, like, Jay's as much... Uh, J Jay's is more Boba rather than Kiki, if you know what I mean. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, rounder yeah. and more like, uh, I'm I'm just a weird little guy. Meanwhile, Ray's is a little more like this, and he's going crazy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I freaking love it. Yeah. <laughs> Melty emoji. This is Jello in the time where they met the animation goal. I mean... The episode I wanted to do, like, wanted to do, the episode I picked to do, Were I So Unlucky, uh, takes place between Epithet, Prison of Plastic, and the next book. So I think I probably would have done this book, written books one and two retroactively, and then been like, all right, everyone, let's get together. We're going to do one, la one last ride. They thought, we thought we were out. Um, and it would have been like a good segue between Prison of Plastic and Sweet Escape. I actually, Class reunion. I feel bad because I DM'd Danny, Kyle, and Sandra, who plays Percy, and I was like, hey guys, uh, will you all be around at the same time anytime on Friday? If I get the time, I can sit down and write a couple scenes from that hypothetical episode and you guys can read through it. And they were like, that sounds great. And then I just ended up dealing with Ingram Spark all yesterday, so I like mm. didn't have time to do that at all. Will Don and Fusio be back? No. <laughs> Probably. Oh, <Dave! laughs> I I don't know Rip. if I don't know if Noah Finway is gonna make it either, unfortunately. I No. Uh, As it do. <laughs> I think I can probably get Stan Goldstein in there as a minor <laughs> character. Yeah. And I'd love to hear Mike Pollock read for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. He'll do it. Mike Pollock auditions for things. He does. Mike Pollock is down for anything at any time, and that's why he's one of my favorite people. I love Mike Pollock. He's so nice, uh, and you he's such a good actor. If you don't know him by name, Mike Pollock is Eggman. Eggman, yeah. yes. Ooh, oh, he's been... God. He's been in a lot of Sound Cadence's anime because if we call Mike Pollock and say that we have work for him, he will show up. And it's one of my favorite things about him. Will Sylvie's uncle still be gay? I don't remember that character being gay. I don't. That's the kind of character who I'm going to mention in passing. <laughs> what, you don't like Rick, Rick, and Morty? I. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I like. I like Zach's take. Uh, I do not like Rick, Rick and Morty, but uh, no, there's no reason to have that character on screen. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. He was dating a non-binary ghost, according to chat. Oh. He was. Is that gay? They got married. Uh, it's a flavor of gay. A gaver of flay? It's yeah. A little, it's a little zesty. <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. Uh, I did see uh, I did see a couple people reacting to your character in Prison of Plastic, Jay. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> I believe they called they called it the character name leak. Character name voice leak. I'm like, what do you mean leak? You're reading the product. <laughs> He's in it. <laughs> it's not a leak. <laughs> Ah, uh, beautiful. Oh, I, man. I, I remember when we were doing the, the big listen through when you were doing final checks and then when that part came up, I don't remember who said it, but they were like, Jay jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Epithet 
that that erased leaks are freaking wild. Man, they just leaked this whole book. Yeah, yeah. You you have to pay for it, but then you get it. <laughs> dude, fucking Naven has a wife, dude. That's fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> leaks are crazy, man. God, oh my god. God, every time I look at any other, please, please OBS, just keep. Can I? I want to like look at any other room. tab. Question: Will we see more stink in the future? Yes, every book. <laughs> You're seeing stink right yes. now. Say one of Stink's famous lines, Marissa. Uh, that's like one of them. It's, that's I, one of them. I like when you said it. I was trying to think of something from the book and immediately like blanked. Uh, I love when he said it's stinking time and he stinks all over the place. <laughs> oh, this I, is. I think my favorite stink <laughs> moment in also includes stunk where we just go, we dabble, we dab, they dab. Yeah, you, uh, you and it wasn't quite a cold read because I did give you the scripts beforehand, but you and Emily really nailed that whole exchange. <laughs> Genu there he is. Genuinely, I think the best part of the two Louis stream. Um, Here's a good, here's a good, uh, spoiler. I will never be able to get over Naven telling the Neo Trio to use tone tags and text messages as a serious speech technique. That's so <laughs> funny to me. Like, Naven literally said, make sure to ask your friends if they are serious or J. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lord. Ooh, here's, here's art of a character I didn't think would get fan art. This is another cameo in this book that I will not spoil. This in general. Oh. Oh my God, Dan Gansley. Ooh. Get out of here, Lola. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaking. I'm leaking. <laughs> God. Uh, is there a way to save the audiobook to my Kindle so I can listen to it on the go? Not. Not currently. yet. Uh, we are. Yeah, here, it's been three hours since the stream started, so I'm gonna, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna do another really quick, like, flyover for what the roadmap yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, make sure, let me make sure the stream is correct. There we go. Okay, um, yeah, so as of this second, today is, like, the audiobook launch day. It was supposed to be the everything launch day, but we had some problems with one of the publication services. So, right now, you can get the audiobook on Sound Booth Theater. If you are a Kickstarter backer, I have sent you things uh, through the messages on the Kickstarter app. You can also look at the most recent update that will tell you how to get your free book that you bought. Um, if you are one of, like, the 7,000 people who got it, there's, like, a few who didn't get the audiobook, but um, most of you did. Uh, you can get it that way. If you just want to buy it, you can go to Sound Booth Theater right now. Uh, I believe the link is pinned at the top of the chat uh yeah. and you can get that it's about 12 bucks which is a spicy good price yeah <laughs> hey Patreon come on down to spicy good price mm -hmm. um yeah and then uh aloha there with the wrenches the blue wrench next to his name uh is posting the patreon thing the only version of the book book you can get at this moment uh you can get a pdf of the digital version of the book complete with all the illustrations and such uh, and you can download that for $10 on my Patreon. And in addition to that, you get everything else you would get for, uh, being a $5 patron, which th there's only three tiers and it's one, five and $15. And the $15 tier only has like six things and they are all very spicy. Um, but, uh, most of the Patreon is open to you at the $10 tier. So, uh, enjoy it if that's how you get this. However, if you have a tablet or a like you use Kindle or whatever and you don't want to do you don't want a PDF because that is a different format um, and it's easy on desktop but can be annoying on mobile and other things. If you want to wait for the EPUB, the official like actually published audiobook that you can buy, it should be out by sometime next week. It's supposed to be out now and the service tells me it's out now. I don't know if that's true. I looked, I couldn't find it. Um, actually, on that note, really quick, I'm going to check, uh, cover for me while I do this. I'm going to look at my, uh, emails and... Yeah. No. Nobody has, nobody has, uh, I asked, I asked the guy who helped me set it up a question about, like, hey, where it be? And he hasn't gotten back to me. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get 
a version of the hardcover and the ebook and a soft cover out this month. I'm not going to guarantee anything more than that because, frankly, I don't trust this service. It should already be out. Mm. Um, that being said, go ahead and when this comes out, you can totally buy that digital ebook completely free. And it should be on, from what I understand, it should be on like normal distribution sites like the Apple Bookstore and stuff like that. Everywhere but uh, Amazon, I believe. I think I specifically opted out of Amazon because I hate them, but it, we'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to put anything on yeah, Amazon by choice. Them. I mean, yeah, that's the moral of Apatheta Race, baby. Specifically, <laughs> fuck <laughs> Amazon, the company owned by Jeff Bezos. <laughs> um, but I would be hesitant to recommend getting a hard copy, even when it's out this month, until I can verify it and I have one in my hands. And I can be like, yeah, this looks good. Because as I told Bo, I spent, I think over the last two days, a collective 12 hours trying to reformat all of Bo's lovely illustrations without fucking them up. Because this service forces page numbers, author name, and chapter name at the top of every page, including full page illustration pages, which why would you do that? Um, so I had to go back in and edit like fake underlines underneath where the words will be hypothetically. So they look less gross, works better on some images than the others. Um, and then even after I did that and converted them to be small images, uh, it was still like, these are big, your book exploded. Uh, <laughs> would you accept us to change things on your behalf? You'll have to confirm it. And I was like, okay. And I clicked confirm. I was like, show me the proof. And they're like, no, JK got ya. And, uh, so I have no idea if it's going to look good or not. And to me, that's unacceptable. So if you really want a hard copy, I would honestly wait a couple more months or at least until you see the Twitter say like, yo, I got a copy. It's pretty good. Uh, and they're going to yeah. be, they're going to be a spency too. And they're going to be less a when, um, <laughs> when they come out in like summer, because the actual publication is going to be a run of books. Like they'll ask me like, how many thousand do you want to print? If you don't sell them all, you owe us money. This is print on demand, which makes them like literally twice as expensive because they don't have to sell any, but if they only get six orders, they got to print six of these books, which uh, yeah. I won't go into why this is insane, but if you've ever been to a book processing plant, asking someone to print six copies of a book is like a huge waste of money. <laughs> yeah. So, so make sure to follow the Twitter just to make keep updated on that. Uh, sorry, shit obviously isn't perfect and sparkly uh, all at the same time, but uh, life doesn't go as planned, never, at all. So, uh, but follow along for the less expensy guarantee. <laughs> the less expensy guarantee, fucking T. Yeah, I I can't guarantee it's gonna be like significantly less expensy but it will be less expensy by some margin because right now uh i was like hey what's the lowest i can make like if you if i set this at the lowest price possible that gets me one dollar per book sale which is bad by the way uh it'll, it'll be fifty dollars yeah. it's fifty dollars and i get yeah, damn, i get one of those dollars so it's like yeah. I don't really even want you to buy that version, to be <laughs> honest. Hey, but think of all the things you can do with it. Uh, you can read it. You can use it for home defense. You can start a fire with an individual <laughs> Are you in? Are you in school? Then you can read that instead of being in school. Oh, do you... That's what a lot of people are doing, apparently. Also, also, can I just point out real quick, Aloha, how yeah. fucked up the prospect of setting a fire with the book Epithet Erased Prison of Plastic <laughs> oh. I don't write the story. I... You're yeah. the fucked up one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't suggest setting the book on fire. You can set it on ice. Oh, here's a... Would that bring her mom back? I don't know. Here's a uh, here's a slang I've never heard from Epithet Spoilers, uh, which is just the current tag. Oh yeah, if you're reading the book, 
tag it as epithet spoilers if you're like doing it like literally just epithet spoilers if you're tweeting about it or whatever that way people can blacklist it if they don't want to know anything this one's not actually spoilery there's a couple scenes with uh Lori has a crush on giovanni in this book because like who doesn't and uh, <laughs> True. Says, someone someone here says why in the ever-loving fuck did you give giovanni riz jello they say a line uh, that that line almost made me fucking faint he's supposed to be a goober there why is he hot <laughs> he's <laughs> always been jello. hot he's always been hot that because was soup is hot me with a gun at the back Ooh. of your head overlooking the earth always, always has, has been, been. <laughs> God. Wait, I'm sexy. Always have been. <laughs> Always have been. Bless. Can you guys tell I've done hours of impressions of all the characters, by the way? Like, because I write out loud. That's, that's just who you are. You mimic things like a little bird. <laughs> He parroted class yes. <laughs> <laughs> His theme is called Sexy O2, you're correct. It is. Yeah. Confirmed. Man, Schmeated. Lori's that so fucking from the, cute. The famously popular Alicia online stream. Yeah. Oh, here's, yeah. here's a question that other people in here can answer. It's not really epithet related, but uh, my friend invited me to be a player character in his D and D podcast. But I don't have a lot yeah. of experience playing characters out loud. Do you have any advice for playing good characters? I'm just gonna change that to Do you have any advice for like player etiquette? Just do it. Don't um, do it. Okay. <laughs> no, well, I said just do just it. Do not it. Do it. <laughs> well. All right. All right, Nike. <laughs> I can give well, some well, general I can give some general improv advice and that is to not say no to things when people try to establish lore between your two characters. If they say that you guys know each other from somewhere or that you have met before, don't just say no and shut them down. Try and build. It's called yes anding. Build on what they're saying. You can have your character not remember the thing that they're talking about, but don't say that it didn't happen uh, because that just puts them in an awkward spot of like, oh, okay, I tried to do a thing and you shut me down. Um, I, to keep an open I, mind. I, I want to yeah. point out that fucking Jay literally threw me into that exact kind of scenario with Indigo. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up slash I apologize. No, it was good. Um, <laughs> The thing I did was I just tried to play kind of close to my heart. Like, you know, how they always say, like, write what you know. Well, act what you know. Fucking and you'll nerd. be okay. Be nice yeah, I am. Like, what I, a I shocker. How about all of you? I don't care. All fucking 20 of Jello's significant others. I don't give a shit. Man, you know you know who I'd love to see interact, uh, Bo, is um, I'd love to see Aloha with that energy talking to Masu, because it's both like little barking dog <laughs> energy. Yeah. I'm a big fucking dog, okay, dude? That sounds like something a little dog would say. Yeah. <laughs> like a little boss who can't make it up the Jello significant other boss tower would say. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're free as fuck, Jay. All I'm saying, you're free as fuck. Listen, I might be, I might be the mid boss, but I'm here to teach you mechanics. Yeah, you're definitely <laughs> mid. <laughs> Man, that, on on both sides, pretty excellent interaction there. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, someone a while ago said, Jello, did you show Jay the art commissions of Rick? I DM'd you on the Epithet Twitter. I want him to have them. Uh, no, I don't have public DMs open on anything for what should be extremely obvious reasons. <laughs> so I, I, I can't. Yeah, I kept sending him milk pictures. Uh, <laughs> is that pictures of milk or pictures of people with milk? Neither. Uh, it's yeah. worse. <laughs> Panic at the polycule, please. <laughs> the um, here, you know what? If you if, take that, take that art and post it and tag it. 
Here, Jay, this is just for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag here, Jay, this is just for you. We'll get it eventually. Yeah. I'll I'll see it. I'll witness it with my eyes. I will smile. <laughs> that is all Dude. I promise. <laughs> I do want to say, Jay, very humble of you to immediately grab the mid-boss category, <laughs> implying that I'm the final boss. I, 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 I was honestly a little selfish of me. I always find characters like that extremely endearing. <laughs> <laughs> Repeating like, mid-boss, honestly a dream. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a gamer, okay? I got it. I'll, 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 I'll do what I must. I'm sorry, Jay, but Cox Gun. That's uh, fine. Dude, I can't. This it's fine to come back near the end. I've got a robot arm. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. It's like you... Aloha shoots your leg off. You come back. You have a robot arm. I'm stronger. I, I shot your... I shot your leg. You look down. On! Oh, fuck! <laughs> I love this video game. It's great. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, oh, all right, my food is here, so I must depart. It was fun! Bye, cheers! Bye! Yeah. Bye! Bye. Oh, so, yeah. Bye. We're yeah. looking at your, your DMs, yeah, by I, the I, way. I just noticed. DMs. No, how can people know I'm talking if I'm not the Borbo blob and Blobaloo? What did you just say with your mouth? It's a spell, Jay. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I'm aggressive! <laughs> I, sorry, it's so. Here's the thing, right? Uh, you, I, 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 I know you guys, but I don't know you guys as well as Jay. Uh, he just enters my range, and I just fucking <laughs> don't like it. I'm sorry. It's um, Byron. On sight. I, I, I speak. I speak, and I'm immediately aggroed. <laughs> uh, you've been in the blast zone like once, Marissa. It's fine. Yeah. Uh -oh. here's a, I've cracked here's a Aloha real question. aggro one time. This is a real question. If I get it by sound bill th sound theater, will I only get an audio file or can I see pictures and words? It is only an audio file. It's an audiobook. You only get the audio. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to get the PDF and the audiobook together to have both things. But still, that's cheaper than a hard copy. So that's like, the that's the thing. That's the ghost trick. Including that's... shipping, it's probably cheaper than a soft copy to uh, pa <laughs> paperback. <laughs> <laughs> paperback. <laughs> <laughs> a semi solid copy. Jello, curious about the season one episodes of Epithet Race. Do views on YouTube with ads or views on Verbs give you more money? Oh, you know what? It's been long enough. Uh, don't watch my shit on Verb anymore. Give me money. Give me money here I, on YouTube. Verb, Verb still exists. Uh, they would have you believe that. <laughs> like, uh, Verb's not doing. They they gave me not very much money and. Then a real, real tight contract that I had to fight to elongate twice. And then uh, about spring last year, I got contacted by the guy who helped me make that contract, who I liked a lot and left Verve almost immediately after he gave it to me. And he is the reason I own Epithet Erased, which I'm the only person I know who owns the, their original animation IP. And it's on a streaming service. That's pretty fucking yeah. rare. Um, yeah. Uh... He did that for me, and he was like, hey, we're, like, uh, me and so-and-so, and I shouldn't give details, are trying to, like, set up, you know, a hypothetical, like, indie streaming service. And they, like, basically use me as a consultant. But, like, mm. for, an like for indie animators. And they wanted to make it, like, a pipeline um, where they could actually, like, connect, you know, like, oh, hey, this project needs background animators, this project needs cleanup, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, hey, how's it going? And we talked a bit about that. And I was like, yeah, thanks for getting me the one good part of my contract. And he's like, oh, yeah. Um, like, And he didn't work at Verve when Epithet was in production anymore. Uh, but he was like, yeah, I talked to some of my old guys at Verve. Epithet did, like, bonkers well for them. It was, like, one of their best shows for a while. And I was like, really? They didn't even fucking tell me. Like, they never oh. messaged me again. Uh, and, like... Of course, I never, like, knocked on their door, like, can we have more money for season two? Because I didn't want that, especially the year after Epithet, where my hands mm. didn't work anymore. From typing 14 hours worth of notes to people every single day, not hyperbole. Mm. Um, but, like, yeah, no, uh, I... I'm I'm confident enough to say that Verve is, like, two years max from going the way of the dinosaur. Though they did... 
They did just refuse with Crunchyroll and Funimation by extension. So they actually have a library again. Mm. But it's not like noticeably better than the Crunchyroll library anymore. Damn. Anyway, not what I'm saying crunchy. is watch my videos on my website. Give <laughs> on, me on, <laughs> on your website, your website wow. YouTube. I own wow. YouTube. That's why Whoa. I can't. That's why I can't Whoa. get my stupid VOD channel monetized. <laughs> God damn it, Jello! You were my enemy all along. It was the one like, the closest uh, to me. Literally, Aloha. If uh, it turned out it was my fault, you were having as much difficulty with the VOD channel as you've been having. You'd legally be allowed to kill me and do a call out post about my corpse. <laughs> 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 Oh. When is Giovanni getting submitted as a Tumblr sexy man? Uh, does not wear enough formal wear for that. Naven bats his eyelashes. Jello, is it okay to upload song covers of epithet songs? Yeah. Will instrumentals of the songs be available? I don't know. Uh, I could make them available, but they're not my songs. Plaster made them. Um, that Plaster and I generally both have the same view of Fuck it, anyone can have it when it comes to copyright, but I can ask her. Uh, I think I think the best way to do that would be like Plaster could put it up on her Patreon or something, and you could like pay a couple dollars, and then like f for five bucks you can use the instrumental or something. I'll at her. Uh, She's in this chat. A wonderful cat. I have a cat on me right now. Me too. Oh, Whoa, cat buddies. Handshake. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you and Plaster get so talented? Short answer, Club Penguin. <laughs> Damn. Do not expound Pen upon that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no further explanation needed. <laughs> yeah, Hi, kids. Sandra. Hello. Hi. Oh. Introduce Hi. yourself to stream. Good evening, everyone. I am Sandra Espinoza, and I am the voice of Percival King. Yay! Yay! Woo. Yay! Woo. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Star of the mm -hmm. previous stream as well. Um, <laughs> I was just telling them I uh, sheepishly do not have the thing I hoped to have time to write for you, Kyle and Danny. But uh, ah, it's okay. Yeah. You like God forbid that you work yourself into a. a, a bedridden stupor the way you did for the actual release of Epithet Erased like when I, I listened to the, the fallout that happened immediately after how horribly ill you became like that's not good J just chill hey, yeah you yeah, see that were... chat everyone asking for more seasons <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> second hand corroboration of Jello's insanity I, love, I feel like I feel like a 107 year old mafia boss is just like no 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 and everyone around me is just like don't Ask him to do anything. Don't ask him. <laughs> he oh. doesn't animate anymore. Okay. Hey. Don't ask him that. S sorry to ask this gel father. Can we possibly get season two? You don't come here and ask for season two. <laughs> <laughs> Me pulling someone frantically to the side. What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing, man? You you yeah, come you here. <laughs> can't ask the jail father you come here and disrespect the jail father after all he's done for you and then you hear from across the room what's that jail father you wait right here you lean down oh he says i gotta kill you <laughs> he just made you a perfectly good fucking audiobook and you dare ask him what's next what's fucking next Tommy? <laughs> Jello, someone, Jello takes season two and burns it with a flamethrower. No, don't freeze it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe, maybe. maybe. Unless. Unless. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some water? Don't ask the gel father anything. <laughs> I take them out to a lake. I tie bricks to their feet. I throw them in, and they float next to cornucopia in the water. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's you know what's wild is Don is a like actually a couple actors in this series have like a non-zero connection to Cornucopia without me forcing that like that just happened like um 
Don once was asking on Twitter, like right after we'd met for the first time, like, hey, I really like web comics. What are some you could recommend? And like jokingly, I was like, eh, the web comic. She's like, I've already read Cornucopia. I love it. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> no one read Cornucopia. <laughs> and um uh Justice, who voices Howie, actually did a Cornucopia dub on his own. <laughs> Oh, and that was the first time I ever like heard his name. And then I was like, oh, who's Justice Washington? And um, then I was like, oh, it's Sagey VA. He did. Why do I know that name? Oh, my God. He did a Cornucopia fan dub. Why? <laughs> and I kicked down the door like, this is the best voice actor you're ever going to find. Put him in your show. Justice is really yeah. good. Justice is another one of the actors where I'm like, give him more roles. Give him more roles. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Any... It's this fucked up thing, Jello, where it's like you've touched so many different kinds of media and made like a wide breadth of many different mm. fucking things that the odds that you've like interacted with someone in your life is just too high. Yeah, the um, <laughs> this is very indirect. And I, I think I mentioned this to you once in passing, Sandra, like ages mm. ago. Um, but when I first signed with my YouTube network like seven or eight years ago, and back then it was full screen and they're dead now. Uh, right they, i was part of full screen too <laughs> yeah no that's that's why uh they were like hey new creator and like because your stupid youtube managers will always be like hey, we've had an idea for a a thing that we don't know how this works because nobody uh -huh. knows how this works and be like okay <laughs> so they had like a it was like a facebook popularity contest or something like which like like these photos which of our uh oh wh which of our <laughs> guys do you like the most and i looked at the <laughs> others and i was like these all suck and i was like oh this girl does team fortress 2 voice acting <laughs> and it was it was you as like dusky old roses or something yeah, yeah. sorry to say your forbidden name if that's bad <laughs> no no it's not bad at all i i had a lot of fun with full screen and, and doing after i did all those voice packs and stuff uh, just doing comic dubs and the like and having them bring me on to like a list of oh you know the, these are all the animation content creators we want to like give a space to so that that would you know kind of extend to the people who would also work with those animators so like we should make like a directory of like the the people who want to contribute sound or voiceover and wouldn't that be cool and I was like really excited for them and I was like yeah I'll help organize that and I'll, and, and then they just sort of disappeared <laughs> yeah I remember I was asking once uh because I think full full screen was like just left of rooster teeth somewhere in there and I was like they do stuff are there like does anyone in your network need voice acting because like I was I was impressed by you at the time because you were actually like branding yourself as like a person who does voice work and back then I was just like I would like to do voice work I haven't. <laughs> and I was like hey what's up full screen does anyone in your network need voice work and they were like we'll check and then like two weeks later I was like did you check and they're like you have messaged Todd <laughs> Todd is dead. I am Chad, your new YouTube manager. <laughs> that really do what, be what life is like, huh? Please schedule. One day you're talking to Todd. Next day you're talking to Chad. It sucks. And then Chad is like, hello, please schedule a call to get to know Chad. And you're like, okay, what's up, Chad? I am not a human. All right. Oh. And then like three weeks later, it's like, Chad, I ran into a problem with my video. I am Zod. Uh, he is, the others are dead. And there is, there's no Zod. role that people, like you think people don't give a shit about their retail job. You've never met a 20-something temp at a mid-2010s YouTube managerial yep. company. <laughs> oh. God. We'll just pass it on to someone else. It's fine. <laughs> I'm only here for until the end of the summer. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm just saying your full screen experience, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, just my full screen experience. Nothing recent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look. Sandra, one of my favorite fun facts about us is that we've known each other like what, like 15 years. Oh God, yes. I forget then, what year that was for that first anime fest, but yes. I guess 15 because I feel like I was 15 at the time, so I'm just like mm. that's probably correct. That's an uh, number. And then. Um, years later we met up and i was like so what are you up to nowadays and you're like i'm a voice actor and i pointed at you and i was like me too 
<laughs> what? <laughs> we had both independently of each other become voice actors and never talked about it. Basically, because I was just like, well, oh, like my husband Shane was doing like pattern help with your seamstressing. And I was like, oh, Marissa makes all the awesome costumes because every time I go to another event, like Marissa's in a new bomb ass costume that she just straight up made herself. And then like out of nowhere i'm just well we should catch up and stuff it's like oh voiceover was a thing oh okay i was just uh. doing legal work as well but yeah no it was really crazy and then you were in this and, and it all came cool. full circle <laughs> also yeah. molly's here hi well oh wait, wait. oh danny hi. is molly hello hi introduce hi. yourself to the stream hello. hi hi stream my name is danny chambers i voice molly blind up an episode of race Prison of plastic. Ow. Hi, dog. Hello, dog. I um. Puppy. I was, I was saying earlier how one of the reasons I think you do such a good job as Molly is that, uh, and we were telling this to each other is that anytime I'm like, I need Molly voice lines, it's always like last minute at eleven thirty p.m. <laughs> and like at least one of us is always exhausted when we record Molly, yep. so mm. the energy carries through. <laughs> yes. It's like, yeah, can you do this? Like, yeah, I can probably squeeze it in uh, after a crazy day. No, but it's always fun, though. Okay, yeah, it's a good time. If you want to uh, open up chat, the link is, I think it's in, like, the scheduling thing. You can find the video. I don't know if Sandra's there either yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can, I can pull it up now, actually. I forgot there's, Did... like, a sidebar. Did you get Keith Silverstein because of Zhongli Genshin Impact or because of Miraculous Ladybug Hawkbonk or was there some other connection? Shut up. Shut uh, up. Well, I, up. Oh, I was, okay. Um, well, <laughs> I got Keith Silverstein because he auditioned for the role and was the best fit for it. Yes. There we go. Uh, I mean, the way that we do all casting is that we have a list of actors and we send it to the actors and then whoever auditions and does a good job and jello picks ends up being <laughs> the voice it what? is it is very much not dependent on their past work at all it is just that we have a list of actors who are good and that we like yeah Whoa. no we didn't we didn't open up like imdb like i like this person let's message them no. they have to audition <laughs> they have to audition for what it's worth, um, since Yam was familiar with the characters and edited, I was getting excited and telling my friends when an actor they liked popped up. And Yam likes Zhongli, to put it simply. Uh, and <laughs> when he auditioned for Graham, I was like, hey, guess who auditioned for Graham and sent the audition over? And you were like, I'm... I, w I don't want to sway you in one way or another, <laughs> but I'm sitting here like, and it's that image of like, the all white magnesium glowing person sitting in a chair. <laughs> like they're about to explode. <laughs> I do have one other <laughs> thing I can say, but I think Yam will throw a rock at me. DM me first. <laughs> Damn. Okay. But I mean, like, you know, when we were casting season one, I think it's a it's a really good mix of like people from kind of all over the place. And that is because, you know, the ca the way that casting works is just that we sent it out to all these people and actors big and small all tried and Jello just picked who fit. And th I mean, that's the best way to cast anything. It, yeah. it sucks so bad when you put someone in a box based on their past work. Yeah, and it's great because I don't know who anybody is. So uh, <laughs> people audition and I'm like, I don't know who you are, you're perfect. And like, and then, <laughs> I was talking about this earlier because again I in the voice acting world I think Ray is probably one of the bigger like Rick's actor is one of the bigger names on this list at the moment um and I remember people were are always like holy shit you got Ray Chase I'm like yeah is he famous <laughs> Big question marks <laughs> over my head me leaning in from the side yes he is what oh my god uh. But he was yeah. also a fan of your stuff. He was. And that's so nice when someone who's a fan gets to work on something they like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. I, I. It's sad, but I have to go because I have a different stream I have to do. 
All right, thank so you I'm for the stream to go to a different one. Thank you. I'm for also taking, taking time. Stream. Yeah, I'm going with them. Yeah, I'm Bye. also Bye. taking Bye, your everybody. boyfriend, bitch. Bye. Yeah, Bye. later. Bye. 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 Good night. That's all right. I got another one. What's your name, Mungu? Johnny Two Partners. Shut Don't up. Don't talk about your boyfriend like that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> or do. Your girlfriend kills you with a knife. <laughs> And yes, Hatsune Miku. Yeah. Oh, she's so cute. Show new people who haven't seen these, the other ones. I quietly slide up to this one. I love this one. I can't get over the bunny shirt. It's, it's very, very good. <laughs> oh my god. That's peak 2000s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> Chat. Oh no, she got the gel father. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> any voice actors on, sound booth theater live says any voice actors on the stream want to do some cold reads for fun cold reads of what sound booth theater what do you have you approach the gel father <laughs> <laughs> uh while someone's thinking about that probably not as uh sparkly or or glamorous as the actual voice acting. I, I just saw by checking Twitter uh, that Kennedy Phillips worked on the sound effects for the audiobook. Um, yeah. And he's an am he's amazing. I've worked with him on a, a couple things, his own audiobook. I mean, uh, his own audio drama. Oh, are you in Megas that? Yeah, Mega Salgar, yes. Who are you? I'm Kaylee Fawn. <laughs> oh, I'm the horrible teeth obsessed Cobalt. And, oh. I'm, and I'm Guy Fieri. <laughs> Oh no, that's the the new one he's doing the, with the kobolds. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, I okay. I was some I was some guard in that. I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's gotten to that point yet. But yes, he told me about your involvement. Now that I'm remembering, uh, but small. he's amazing. Look, and there's there only also, so like, many people. ADR we did. There's only so many people who are good at their jobs, so they get hired for everything. <laughs> that's true. When I needed sound like music mixing, and I just went to you, Jello, and I was like, "Who do you trust?" And you were like, here's a name. I'm like, thank you. That's great. But yeah, just a brief, like, not not to plug anybody, but if y'all ever heard of Kennedy Phillips, like, go check him out. He's an amazing guy. <laughs> and he did the sounds that made, brought Prison of Plastic to life. And yeah. yeah. Everyone else did stuff to bring it to life, too, obviously. Someone. <laughs> no, get fucked, everyone else. <laughs> Someone... I just. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Um, no, 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 go. It's your stream. I, I was just going to say, someone uh, requests Percy, please say, you fool, your soul is forfeit, all in caps, in the second half. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that's from. I, I'm not sure either, so I might not have the same power, but I will try. Uh, let me see if I can't find it, because I'll forget it in the next second I try to say it. Here, I'll copy paste it for you. Thank you. If I can get over here. Yeah, here we go. Oh, uh, okay. I like that. <laughs> I will. Hi. You will. Hi, Hi. Will. Hi. <laughs> How goes it? Pretty, Pretty good. good. What up? Oh. How goes Yeah, hello. You fool. Your soul is forfeit. <laughs> picture her I'm opening her mouth like that. Have you ever guys ever seen that one comic that's like, I'm going to dribble this basketball like hell you are. <laughs> and the one dude just like sucks out the soul of the other guy. <laughs> Boy, yeah. I had no idea you were reading something and I thought things had really escalated upon my uh, joining of the call. <laughs> She's like going everyone to kill just me. Quiet. Uh, Maybe yeah. These things just happen. Who are you, Will? Introduce yourself to chat. Oh yeah, hi. Uh, I'm William. Uh, I voice Ramsey in uh, the show, and uh, I also pop on Jello streams for various things, such as right now we're doing Night in the Woods, which is a lot of fun. I play Germ and one of the Smelters. Uh, <laughs> Ghost Smelters. And, Ghost Smelters. And uh, I also run TTRPG stuff on Surprise Round RPG, a little thing called Eben Ward. So yeah. If you're ever interested on that, we uh, we do that on Sundays. Yeah. But yeah. Thanks, chat. Ghost melters. Ghost melters. 
Man, I can I can immediately tell I have such an affinity for like aquatic designs, um, not just mermaids, but mermaids included. This one's gonna fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> Little thing he says over one hundred episodes. Oh, you know. It's not for everyone. It's like rock climbing. It's like rock climbing. <laughs> Oh, Will's here. Hi, Will. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting pizza. Oh, Ooh. I salad. My my voice my voice recognition blanked out, and I thought that was Sandra for a second. I was like, <laughs> "You were here." <laughs> well, just being polite, and that's appreciated. Making me feel welcome. <laughs> what uh, what kind of za did you get? A stuffed crust. Ooh. Oh. Anything else going on in that pizza, or you just get stuffed crust? <laughs> nope, you no don't choice. put toppings on pizza. That's sacrilege. You always have to judge a place by how they do their plain slice. If they can't nail a plain slice, then it's there's no use in bothering with their toppings. Yeah, so you know, is yeah, you get... in natural state then. Hey, guys, guess who's from New York in this chat? <laughs> Based on those no, reasons. No, 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 hold on. She has a point. You're not wrong. That's... I'm just saying. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Yeah, it's yeah. We got a we got a little pizza place around here, and uh, I think their just regular cheese pizza is better than most of their other stuff, because you know it's one of those situations where they put a lot of pepperoni on and then it's just soggy. And I'm like, no, nah, dog. Ew. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, I ain't here for this. They're covering up their mistakes, is what they're doing. Mm. That's a veil of pepperoni. Well, they failed because they made more. <laughs> Oh, no. for, for some reason when you said plain slice i i imagined without even sauce or cheese and i was like oh my god none pizza none left pizza beef. left beef <laughs> oh yeah i don't know how i feel about that one i uh well it looks pretty appetizing if you've never seen the picture someone, someone asked what are the epithet or is character's favorite pizza styles or topping combos uh i don't know if you've got a character you can answer that i can't imagine percy's is normal percy's like what is pizza <laughs> <laughs> i feel like percy if, if she enjoys a, a, a any kind of good pizza it wouldn't be something ridiculous but it would be something like like a white slice but hold the ricotta just hmm. it would just be the crust and mozzarella baked onto the top so it's barely recognizable as a pizza but the ricotta is just too it's too rich it's too indulgent any pizza <laughs> is fine so long as it comes with the small plastic complimentary table they put in the center of the pizza <laughs> oh she would be so much more fascinated by the little table than any other part of the pizza experience I think it's so kind that they provide you a place to eat with the order. Puts if, entire slice of pizza on it. Oh, this is a dumb question, and it's really just for, like, me, Yam, and Lenti, I guess. But uh, if you had to put Lord Remington, my lemonade Sona, <laughs> in Epithet Erased, what story would you write? Not, not answering that one. And who would your dream voice actor be? And I was like, well, I'd have to play Lord Remington. And I was like, you know what? No. He's already got a character in Epithet, technically, but Stephen Kelly would make an oh, amazing Lord Remington. You're right. I don't have a better answer than that. Stephen Kelly is the pick. Yeah. Who the fuck is Lord Remington? Are you talking about the guy with the big cup? He's yeah. the guy that, yeah, make it with the pickle that stirs the lemonade. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. He would. Oz is back, says chat. Yes, what? No. Why are you crying? Mm -hmm. You didn't see that. <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> I... I'm, I'm snoofly, okay? I just washed my face and the cold... The, the cold water make my nose go... Cello, I'm pretty unfamiliar with EE characters outside of the original season. What characters do you voice? I love hearing your voice. Thank you. I don't know if this Aww. comment's a joke or not. Uh... I make the show <laughs> is why I'm here. Uh, I guess I voiced Ben in the first season. Like, oh, Ben. <laughs> Yo, 
Go, the ghost, sleeper hit Ben. Ghost smelters. Uh, ghost smelters. Ghost smelters. Um, I ghost voice... smelters. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trixie feels like a hockey kid to me. Oh, don't say that to me. Oh, right. You're Canadian. That has a different connotation in your country. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I'm I'm Canadian, and also I grew up in a household where none of none of the kids ended up being hockey kids to a father who loves hockey. So well, that's uh, why. Oh, the shame you must feel. Oh no, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Someone pointed out, Jello, you also voiced Giovanni's mom. I voiced both of Giovanni's mom. The second one hasn't shown up oh. yet. <laughs> oh, Bo, I see it. I see it, Bo. <laughs> Because, um... <laughs> I'm coming. Uh, I'm gonna get you. Because Giovanni... Uh, Rhea actually did some, like, fun hypothetical drawings of Giamami and Giamama. <laughs> but... <laughs> smelter. <laughs> but, um... The, uh... He's, I imagine Giovanni's got one short and stocky mom who's, like, a construction <laughs> worker. And then the other one is, like... Really tall and likes crystal healing and is very flowy. And they're both going to be me because it doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> he has two of them. Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> oh my god, Bo, I fucking love that. <laughs> wearing <laughs> wearing Dixon's smelter's jersey, it's way oh, too yeah. big. <laughs> Somebody help her. Dixon will be fun to cast too. Jesus fuck, holy Christ. Oh, I, I can't wait to be in the room when you start writing that freak. <laughs> I think they'll be pretty easy, to be honest. Mm. All, all the rough houses are. <laughs> Trixie looks like Marini here, says chat. Yes, Marini yeah. would be on that team. <laughs> There's so many Pokemon that suit Trixie that it's like, it's kind of hard to pick just six. In, in my head, the ultimate oh. Trixie Pokemon is Esper. Esper, yeah, just the <laughs> face. It was fun. Hello. <gasps> Kyle! Hi, Hello! Kyle! Hi, Kyle! Kyle! He's mute. He's mute. Damn it. So, Ow! Oh, oh Kyle! Keep, keep trying. Say more words. Me? Is it me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's you. It How's it going, friends? It's hey, going. Friends. It's going pretty good. <laughs> It's nice to see you. Say hi to the stream. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Tell Glad them who you are. Glad I could join the party. Um, I'm Kyle Ignacy. I played Giovanni Potage. Um, yeah, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you all for for showing up and then just breaking the internet for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if if none of us showed up to this stream and we were like, "Get on stream, Kyle," <laughs> and you got here. Hello. <laughs> well, yeah, no I, one's here guess i'll go home <laughs> i was this was on the last stream because we did one last week but i i mentioned briefly i was like it's a delight to record with kyle for many reasons but um the fun fun upside and downside of doing the audiobook is we were beholden to the text so i couldn't get any like fun kyle improv which there was mm. a little bit of last time but i was like kyle when you give him like a small like a non-verbal thing. You never know how Kyle will read it. So on the paper, at one point, Giovanni just is like, he's presented like a question about a recipe or something. And he goes like, oh, I need to think about that. And the, hmm. and the text is HMM ellipsis. But the way you read it is, oh, let me think about that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Adding like five more M's. <laughs> I took the R was like 17 M's. Capitalized in the middle. God. Well, <laughs> good stuff to work with. Thank you. So, yeah. Someone I just, love doing stuff. Someone in chat asks, are the are the websites, do they protect credit card info? My guardian is curious. I'm sure Patreon is safe and... I have no reason to believe Sound Booth Theater is like secretly a scam site. I'm pretty sure they're both legit, especially because right now they are mostly giving people's um, giving people 
more they're giving away more books today than they are like having people pay for them because most of the Kickstarter backers get one. You can also go through Apple Pay or PayPal, I believe, too, if that's more secure for you. Possibly. Will this be coming to Barnes and Noble? Um, not as far as I know. The if they've got like are they Nook? To, if they have their own like digital book service, it might be on there by the end of the month. But I'm not gonna guarantee anything. I will take it to a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Just place it. <laughs> just, just slip it just in onto it. the shelves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, what is what is that? Uh, not, not geocaster. What's the other th the reverse of that? Like the real life thing where people go geocaching? Is that geocaching. it? Geocaching. Yeah. Hide yeah. Epithet Geocache, yeah. You just hide epithet erase volumes in random bookstores throughout but, your town. That's oh, good enough. put them put them in a neighborhood library, a tiny library. Ah. Oh. I have printed exactly four copies of Prison of Plastic. <laughs> it is your job to locate them. One is in the north, the other in the south. The other two, I, I don't I know. You that's, that's, that's a mystery. I you were saying, <laughs> one is the in west. the north, the other is in the north, the third is in the north, the fourth a surprise. Good luck. And the last two are in one piece. It's yours <laughs> if you could find it. Molly singing very half-heartedly. Come aboard and bring along all your hopes and dreams. <laughs> close, uh, up on, <laughs> close up on our pirate sister. Oh. Uh, man, Danny, have you ever seen... There's this guy who does... He's like... He works at Ikea or something, and he's like a comedian. Uh, and he's got these TikToks or Vines that are all like... I hate my job and he'll start the video with like um some like typical <laughs> annoying thing that a customer will say to him or do uh, it'll be like oh didn't scan guess it's free and then it'll immediately cut to him like being angry just be like you must be out of your goddamn mind it's not <laughs> uh, and, and oh, then this like really dramatic guy. music starts playing i, I love that guy <laughs> I've listened to, um, it's like Scott something is his name. Uh, help me out, chat. But there's there's compilations of those, and there's two or three that I'm just like, would kill for someone to make a Molly and Lorelei animatic of those. They're oh so God, funny. Yeah. There's Scott the Waz That would be hilarious. Scott Sice, I think it is. Wrong, many yeah. wrong Scots there. It's not Scott the Waz. <laughs> Hold on, my dog just opened the door one second. Okay. Oh my god, my cat does that. Look for him. They're in the learning. New, look for him in the new film Cone Cane Bear. Doing? He is in that, yeah. Scott Sice, yeah. Um There's one specifically that is like there's a bunch of good ones, but my favorite one is the one where it's like <laughs> Lord. <laughs> it's one of the most of them are Lori energy because they're too outwardly angry. But one of them's just like, do you have any coupons for me? That's what I ask you. We all have our roles to play. What, you think I just keep a couple hundred percent offs back here for the smart customers? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Ooh. Every time oh, yeah. I come here, they get my order wrong. Then stop coming. Why are you here? Every Why time you, you come here, they get your order wrong? Sounds like you're the problem. Look <laughs> inward. <laughs> Isn't that... Don't they like start with some really dire music as soon as yeah. he starts going on? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I posted one of them in the general. Yes. Oh, it's so funny. Also, the, in general, this picture of a uh, old timey like tape cassette, but it's actually a USB. I love that. Oh, oh that's, that's clever. <gasps> I want oh. that. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> we all want that. Also, I'm just slowly dying inside that I had to refer to a tape cassette as old timey. Oh. <laughs> they are though. I had Spice World on a tape cassette. Yeah. I didn't oh have the CD. I had the tape cassette. We're really a uh, weirdly nostalgic stream, mostly for the 2000s. But... Yeah. <laughs> I only ever owned two cassettes. One was an in sync cassette, and the other one was To Be a Yo! Master, the Pokemon cassette. <laughs> Hell yeah! The only two you'll ever need. 
Yep. I would just alternate them. Is is to be a master? Is that the one that had the O Town song on it? Mm-hmm. One art make a difference. One choice can change it all. I don't know. That might be one of the movie soundtracks. I think that's a movie soundtrack. Yeah. To be a master had like what kind of Pokemon are you and yeah. other stuff from Pikachu's jukebox. Yeah, the oh. the songs they'd play as like eye catches going in and out of episodes of Pokemon. Um, yeah. So so like the poker rap, unrelated. Well, kind of related. Video that literally always makes me laugh is um, the old like not the Brian David Gilbert one, but it's like it's called like the perfect poke rap or the ultimate poke rap. And I do love the Brian David Gilbert one, but it, it just goes through the whole thing until it's, um, baby, that's my cause. Jigglypuff, 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 Jigglypuff. Catch him, catch him, gotta catch him all. Jigglypuff. <laughs> Jigglypuff. <laughs> it's good every time. Did the cassette have the German poker rap on it? Be nice to me. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> which Sounds like a story. Which one of Giovanni's moms is related to the rough houses? The crystal one. It's the crystal one? Yeah, definitely. Shit, alright. This changes things. Fish. 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 Oh yeah, Fish. just so just Fish. so everyone can know. This fish, that's a rabbit fish. Wow. Oh. Why is it called that? Oh, because they got like a little rabbit. bug teeth. Aw. Because if you if you if you look at it on the side and squint, its its little <laughs> mouth looks like rabbit ears. Because if you look at it at the side and squint and erase it and draw a picture of a rabbit, it, <laughs> looks, a rabbit. Just like a it looks like a rabbit. <laughs> they are also natural predators to carrots. So, <laughs> someone in chat. I thought you were going to say this fish is racist. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes it a rabbit. <laughs> My favorite what? Tumblr, your fish is racist. <laughs> no, no. Problematic fave. <laughs> Dory, absolutely racist. <laughs> the things she said backstage to Marlon's actor, unbelievable. Oh. Finding Dory just to cancel her. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, <laughs> She knows what she did. Holy shit. Does she? Well. <laughs> she can't use that excuse forever. She can't. <laughs> That, what right. excuse? That, <laughs> all right, this, How did they get me that bad? That that bit's not getting any funnier than that. <laughs> all right, move on, move on. Stop it right there. Uh, what Naven? Why is Naven being assigned fish race? <laughs> Was he? I don't recall that. I'm reading. Oh my god. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> How are y'all doing? When will we get a Jello Apocalypse and Snap Cube collab? You already have one. It's the Sonic video. Penny plays Sonic in that. It's true. It's That's true. That's right. <laughs> oh, Raya drew a stink. The lab. Who? Oh. Raya drew a stink and put it in general. <gasps> <A> stink. <gasps> Little man. Stink with an actual cow on the shirt. I drew a dog originally because I didn't know what the animal on the ref was supposed to be. I love the animal being incomprehensible. Just like a 90s gobbledygook of a creature. It might be a rabbit fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually love that Geo Mama. Those are Great. good. Which one is the mama? <laughs> I love that the wispy one has the shark teeth. Yeah, yeah, that, that one, that one. I love it. There's, Rhea, do you have, you did these great little comics where it, like, implies that, like, <clears throat> uh, the rough and tumble construction mom who you hear in season one is actually the more lenient one where, like, she's she's more like, you know, do your dishes, like, normal stuff. But, like, the tall mom is the one who almost never raises her voice, but when she does, it's like, haha, fuck, I'm in danger. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm in danger. I believe 
I believe the way I phrased what I imagined Giovanni's m relationship with his crystal mom is like is Giovanni learns that his mom is like, oh yeah, you can use crystals for healing. And he's like, no way, mom, you can't do that. But for the wrong reason where he's like, crystals are exclusively used for potions and save points in video games. Like, no, Gio, honey, it's not the problem. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Giovanni, put on a sweater. It's sweater weather. <laughs> 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 okay. Discord, like, in half of that, it sounded like you were being pulled down yeah. a well. You're gonna freeze to death! Look at these comments. My body, my choice, Mom! <laughs> we're reading comics, Kyle, though. I appreciate you ripping. <laughs> They're right there in the general chat if you can't see them. No. <laughs> I killed him. It's finally happened. We also I, can't see it. Look at all the witnesses. Uh, I can't look at it. Uh, I, I can't look at it. It's too much. It's too much for me. When's the OVA script read? It's it's not. I mentioned that earlier. I didn't have time. I was up until two in the morning and I spent almost all yesterday formatting stuff. Oops. That's okay. Busy guy. The, uh... <laughs> I posted this on Twitter ages ago, but there was some line that was originally going to be from that scene that I really wanted to do, which was Giovanni and Molly shopping for stuff. They see Percy. Giovanni's like, we gotta hide because that's a cop. And they do like the two kids in a trench coat thing, but Giovanni's a giant. So they're like 11 feet tall with Molly sticking out of the top. And Percy walks up. Oh, hello, Miss Blind Death. Hi, officer. <laughs> I don't remember you being so vertically talented. Oh, you know, <laughs> puberty. Ah, uh, yes, I remember puberty. And then it zooms into <laughs> Percy's unmoving face for like 15 seconds while you hear the sound of traffic and car accidents. Oh. <laughs> and then it cuts back out anyway. <laughs> oh God. I love Percy. That just means puberty hit like a truck. Uh, Giovanni's uh, wispy mom being so scary when she yells reminds me of the one time I remember my own mom yelling. Um, it lined up with the tree falling onto our patio in the backyard. Huh? So, uh, oh. <laughs> is your mom? Wait, are you God? sure your mom isn't Hera? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we never made her that angry again. <laughs> Good lord. But what a windfall for the mom just being like, yeah, so don't ever get me that mad again. Never And again. then just going, holy crap, holy crap, holy crap, do, holy crap. Do Geo and Trixie meet at family gatherings and stuff, and do they have good relations? You can learn the answer to that question in Epithet Erase <laughs> Prison of Plastic. Get buy the, my book, buy my book, buy, buy my, my book. book. Get the audio book right now on Sound Booth Theater. Yeah, Geo and, Geo and Trixie have a good relationship. He calls her short Good. snacks. Thumbs up. Oh, well, that's cute. It is cute. <laughs> it's a great exchange where Gio's like, uh, as of today, I am leaving the Bonsai Blasters. Oh. Good. They stink. Yes, they do indeed stink. <laughs> <laughs> buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. To, uh, to quote Giovanni, Trixie and her twin brother Rex are the only members of the Rough House family who have never beaten him up. Yet. Hooray! Oh. Yet. If they tag team and, and do that trench coat thing, they might get him. They might get him. Hello, normal man! Oh my god! <laughs> Psych! Where can we buy them? You can buy them on Sound Booth Theater! And listen to everyone in the audiobook. Uh, you can also get the PDF version of the book on Patreon. The audiobook link is right there at the top of chat. It's blue. It's next to my name. Well. Oh, well, if it's blue. You know, if it was yellow, maybe I'd do it, but... Hmm. Well, my name is yellow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hmm, got you this... there. 
I'll think about it more. What? That takes on a different context. What? Someone in chat. By the way, today I learned that Jello didn't voice Giovanni. I've never voiced Giovanni. <laughs> this wasn't a secret. Kyle's credited in every episode. <laughs> Tisk, tisk. Although, to be fair, most people have never seen us in the same room at the same time. But Gasp. what, if, what yes. if Kyle is voiced by Jello? It's it's so oh, hard to manage shit. the stream and my sock puppet Kyle account. Why do you think <laughs> why do you think Kyle's so good as a puppeteer? <laughs> He's used to it. <laughs> that's so cool that you make puppets. I that's so cool. I love that. I, that's crazy. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll actually be sewing while we stream in just a little bit. <gasps> what are you making? Can you tell us? Uh, so I was <laughs> randomly hired by a church uh, to make a cow and a pig for their sermon on Sunday. Oh, oh. Cool. Uh, yeah. Once once they're once they're there, I mean, it's not going to be my best work. It's a very rushed job, uh, but I will post pictures for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. How how did you start getting involved with that? Was it just like a, that looks neat and just started trying it or? Uh, like all good stories, I got started in puppetry because I lied. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Brilliant. I, You're yeah. lying. In college, they were like, hey, you bunch of theater kids, you need to do a project in pairs. And, and we said, no, we're theater kids. We're going to do it as one giant group. Uh, and so Aww. we decided that we were going to do a video tour of Pittsburgh because I went to school in Pittsburgh starring our uh, teacher as the guide. And he said, absolutely not. And I said, as a puppet. And he said, okay. And then I figured out how to make puppets. Oh my God. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Wow, you really put yourself in a corner, huh? <laughs> and that is entirely true. Uh, the videos, uh, unfortunately, I think uh, the, the only tape that we had of it was destroyed in, because yes, we had a tape if we're really aging ourselves back for nostalgia purposes. Um, it died in a, in, a, in a flood several years ago. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're covering your tracks. All right, what? Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll find a picture of that very first puppet. He was, he was, I'm pretty proud of him. It was, it was bizarre. It was a flood of soup, but it was a freak accident. We don't know what happened. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> on, a, on a hot, molasses yeah. July, freezing hot day. <laughs> uh... Freezing hot? <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about it. Kyle I'm actually was... gonna... What? Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was... It, it was unrelated. Please proceed. I, I was just gonna say, Kyle also shot the um, Heist Night video, which is the uh, Bonsai Blaster and uh, Giovanni doll commercial, which is the best one. During so the good. height of COVID. Yeah. Oof, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, uh, I delivered... <laughs> I delivered the um, the dolls to you, and that you were like the first person I'd seen in person in like three months, because uh, mm. that was when like everyone still took COVID seriously for a little while, and uh, I we talked about you being a census taker for a little bit. Uh huh. That was a, a shitty job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> During the height of the pandemic, nobody wanted to answer their doors. <laughs> Oh, wow, yeah, I hadn't considered that, yeah, yeah, oof. I didn't even think people still went in person to do I thought it was just forms that they mailed people and hoped for the best. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we were out there. Oof. Like us. Do your civic duty, everybody. Answer your freaking census. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Think about Kyle when you have to do that stuff. Think about yeah. Kyle. Can you imagine oh, being an Epithet fan and answering your door? It's like, hi, I'm Kyle Ignacy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you exist? <laughs> People live here. <laughs> then you're faced with the ultimate difficulty. Do you hang out with Kyle Ignacy, but you have to answer a census in the process? <laughs> I, I don't think he'd want to hang out with you mid pandemic 2020 uh, no. yeah i mean yeah i mean if, if we if we like shelved that problem for a moment so in the chat kyle's second worst job after working for jello <laughs> actually you know <laughs> oz is the only person shot, in shot. here who has the right to be like fuck <laughs> that 
I don't know. I just heard you know, say take back the in shot. My day, in the halcyon year of 2018, before I'd heard of anything called so this is basically Boku no Hero Academia, I had all my teeth. I had all my hair. But now look at me. You know, I'm I was, just a nickel on the ground. <laughs> I was trying to like picture you. <laughs> I was trying to picture you like what what you're in the hypothetical gel father mafia family bit like what role you would have and what you'd look like because i'm imagining myself as like a gumdrop shaped old man who's like two feet tall in a chair and and instead of like thinking immediately my brain was like oh uh obviously oz would be his aged talking parent <laughs> like, what are you talking about <laughs> This is going off kilter of mafia boss. Looking in the mirror, pointing in the mirror. Look what they did to my boy. They massacred my boy. Oh, they massacred my boy. I'm sorry, gumdrop shame. Yeah, gumdrop. I just thought yeah, Bo that. gets it. Bo gets it. <laughs> Wait, stop, Bo. Bo, turn that into a minion right now. <laughs> Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> minion. <laughs> now it's a minion. He got a do bebo. Oh my god, not a beeb, I'm a minion. <laughs> I don't know what they sound like. I mean, that's, that's more or less it. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking of your jello avatar, but like slightly melted with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Jello, did you want to add a Giovanni tag to Kyle's display name? Oh, yeah, sure. A little beard. <laughs> there you go. Now everybody knows. Now all of China knows you're Kyle. <laughs> Are you turning what? him into, into a mech now? <laughs> I'm drawing oh, what I am in this family. Oh, that's you. That's his pet monitor lizard. Here, just draw a tiny little speck under the couch. That's a spider. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the lizard. <laughs> How dare you come to him on the day of his book's release? <laughs> Man, I love it whenever characters have like just a, a like a beard or a mustache that talks instead of a mouth. Just <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Like, Power. Could I be a sheep in this style. equation? Sure. Is that one of the reasons? Are you are you sheep kin? Is that one of the reasons you're pro feeny? <laughs> no, I just really like sheep. I was going off of the idea of, like, when they show a mob boss or other, like, uh, uh, crime ringleader and you see them having a weird exotic pet, like a <laughs> fucking bear or a leopard or something, it's like, I'm the gator. I'm, I'm <laughs> and just, this has just turned into a farm. <laughs> I, I just picture, like, the, the cinematography is trying to be serious with this shot. Where it's like, this is the chill father, and it starts playing the Godfather theme, but instead of like a non diegetic music track by like an orchestra, it's just little spider Oz going, <laughs> Christ. Also, want to shout out the Sound Booth Theater uh, person who has been very nicely talking in the chat this entire time is going to take some time off to go listen to prison of plastic thanks for being here sound booth theater person oh thank, thank you. you so much thank you rock we yeah. like you thank you sound booth theater has been a delight to oh your first puppet oh geez oh it's the third stadler and waldorf <laughs> that was your really first good. puppet that's great wow. actually yeah, yeah. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta see. I gotta pass judgment. The guy. What is this? Holy shit, dude! He's got skin like people. Skin. Is that what your teacher looked like? <laughs> well, not anymore. He's a puppet. <laughs> not anymore. We needed to source that skin. <laughs> oh man, that looks like Hugh Laurie at his worst. I love it. Hugh Laurie. <laughs> yeah. He's got a long, long face. Yeah. yeah that's I guess. great. I love he's got, that. He's got long, long milk. <laughs> 
Okay. Wow, that <laughs> Oz joke. That, that got you. Huh? <laughs> I'm in a good mood. What can I say? Happy Thank anniversary, you. you two. Happy end. Thank you. Bo, can you show the puppet? <laughs> no. That's the guy. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh. I see it. Ooh. Oh. Oh. There oh. he is. Yeah, I see it. That's really good. Especially I'm, the eyebrows. Yeah. I, mm. I'm just thoroughly impressed that this is your first crack at puppetry. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, you. That was eons ago. Did you make it with, like, felt or something? So yeah. that was not knowing anything and back then so there are, there are so much I can nerd out about this all day there are so many more resources now for puppet and puppet pu you know puppet making and, and patterns and all that stuff that are available on, online but that was back in 2004 uh, you know the early days of the internet uh, <laughs> um, and so there was there was nothing to go off of that's like sheets of plastic and staples and hot glue and hope Plastic. Wow. Okay. Jason of plastic. Oh. Oh. oh there's Got it back around. <laughs> Buy my book. <laughs> oh, really cool puppet. Buy my book. <laughs> oh, two of them. Oh, Sonora Looking at Park a thing in a book. <laughs> oh, wait, where, where is this? I know I have this somewhere. Also, Kyle, I don't think anyone would be against hearing you nerd out about puppet making. Well, good, because I've prepared three hours of a seminar here. Excellent. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, well, first off, it, it, you use toxic chemicals, and it's really great. Um, buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait! Did I was I supposed to say that, that, that. I was supposed to say that in the other voice. Shit! Uh, buy my book. <laughs> Did I mention that the three-hour speech is just two hours and fifty-nine hey. minutes of silence? Hey, hang on. Uh, can anybody? Uh, can anybody do a Jello impression in here? Hang on. Oh! <laughs> I, lo I love this. Try. I think the context is, for this is Molly goes to confront Lorelai and Lori turns her into a puppet. Yes. What a horrifying power. Oh, that's so fucked up to imagine buttons on top of the Muppet eyes. Ooh. Yes. Oh, in chat. Giovanni, Ooh. I miss video games. Molly, I miss my mom. Oh, no! <laughs> no! I miss my mom. <laughs> I miss video games. I, I, I miss my mom. <laughs> sure is down her city in here. <laughs> you don't get it, Feeny. She turned me into a puppet. <laughs> I feel like it would be really cool. You know how they used to do, like, the Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest? And that was, like, uh -huh. a really big draw? We should do a voice-alike contest. Oh. I'm trying hmm. to think. I was supposed to be like, I can do a pretty good Marissa impression, but my, my go-to line for the Marissa impression is kind of a bummer. <laughs> so I gotta think of something else. Yeah. No, go for I it. No, hear, say it. I can hear no. it in my head. No. <laughs> you put it out there. It's manifested. You, you have to. Say, say it as though it's not a thing you casually say all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm an ogre. I'm an ogre. I'm an ogre. <laughs> A little guy. A little guy. I'm an old guy. I think my Rick impression earlier was pretty good, actually. <laughs> but I can't do normal Ray Chase. Yeah, I can do a lot of I can do a lot of characters, but not the actors. And that's that's something I do often, where I'll pick like a voice someone does as a bit, and that's just like that's my impression of you. Like, uh, like, <gasps> Piff is probably, piff. yeah, Piff is the easy Everybody one. Everybody do the Piff voice. <laughs> yeah, everyone do the Piff voice. We, we have a friend who is Piff, and Piff's great, and, like, <laughs> Piff sounds like a normal person. He just he, sounds like a normal guy. He just sounds like a normal yeah. guy. But sometimes, like, if you, like, as a joke, you'll say something like, oh, Piff, you ruined it, and he'll go, oh, I'm sorry. And <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is actually really good. <laughs> Piff's great. 
Someone says Yam had a really good Feeny voice. I assume you mean from last year's read through. Aw, thanks. I was like, oh, I could. What's what's like a thing that Oz says that I literally my brain just supplied? That's what I look like. <laughs> I look like. <laughs> I... Either that or just somebody talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> oh, do do a Majin impression. Uh, it won't sound like Sylvie because all of my. All of my, like, Zack, Sylvie, Majin impressions are predicated on extremely specific, like, oh, I think I'll just put this in roll 20 and... Ooh! <laughs> 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 oh, I just gotta scream. Yeah, if you ask a group of friends to do impressions of each other, they're not gonna be doing their characters. That could be fun, though, to, like, prototype the version of body swap potential storyline. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, so people, like, like, Molly, Molly, Molly voice as Danny <laughs> doing what it would sound like if Giovanni's soul was in Molly's body, you mean? Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, that would be fun. Oh, Christ. Oh, my God. I mean, I'd love to hear that. I don't, off the top of my head, know what... I don't even know what that would sound like, frankly. So, so Giovanni's soul would be inside Molly, but so, it would be Molly's voice come out yeah. the same thing Giovanni would say. So, like, Mo well, Molly's voice box, but Giovanni is piloting. I was gonna say, for a preview of that, you could just listen to... Uh, this, that... <laughs> Also, have you talked about that yet? Sorry, what? Discord ate you. Oh God, come on! Um, that beautiful sound for you can get a preview of that sound right there. Oh yeah, the the parody. Yeah, the man that cover came out so good. Yes. It so much it legitimately sounds like Broadway studio recording quality, in my opinion. <laughs> I think it's great. Hear that sound, Cadence? Danny, you are quiet again, by the by. Gosh dang it, I'm sorry. Oh, thank that's you. what, that's it, that's the voice. Hello, it is me, Giovanni. <laughs> Giovanni. <laughs> it is him. Tra <laughs> trapped in small bear. Ken <laughs> has a very fussy baby. Cannot get off. Kermel is a very fussy animal? baby. <laughs> My favorite animal, bears. <laughs> they are the bearest. <laughs> It's Danny's so funny is Molly because even recording like that little promo that got put out today, just a little like, oh, m my stupid sister, she's a witch. Oh, and she's dressed as one too. Eh, eh, joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I love those little bits in there. Uh... I I love Molly's style of humor. It's extremely funny. <laughs> Yes. She's just tired. She's just so tired of everything. Like, look, you either get the joke or you don't. Because I'm, I'm just, I don't got time. She just, she just does not have time. That's just her thing. Molly's humor style is either like, oh, sorry. Sorry, I made a little joke. Don't, don't mind me. Or I'm going to say whatever I want. You can react however you want. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's just so tired. There's some really great exchanges with Rick where like uh it, what, Molly deletes something that was a sentient creature uh essentially from Lori's world using her epithet and Fika freaks out and it's like Molly you can't just kill people like that he wasn't real he was a baby she's <laughs> like you get used to it that's the worst possible response <laughs> eh and then Rick's like, oh, don't, it's okay, bestie, I get ya. You lose feeling after you've killed so many, or like you've d destroyed so many. You can't keep feeling. If you feel every time, it hurts too much to think about, am I right? I don't like that we can bond over this. Hey, <laughs> me neither! 
She's like, I am just very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> can you, Danny? Can you read this in Molly's voice? Wait. Uh... I'm typing it. Oh, okay. I love the way Bryn says, "He was just a baby." He's a baby. <laughs> He's a baby. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I'm just, I'm just standing here. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have time for any of this. Why? Bottom text. <laughs> Bottom text. <laughs> Aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you just want to go ape shit? Go ape shit. <laughs> oh, can we actually get you saying that? Is there? Oh god. Um. Frick, okay, yes. Uh, what is it? Aren't you tired of... Let me check. I actually don't know offhand. Yeah, I don't remember what it is. Aren't you tired of being nice? Don't you want to just go ape shit? There we go. <laughs> I have to check it out. Here it is. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Are you tired of being nice? Don't you just want to go ape shit? <laughs> <laughs> the best part of owning this and having no corporation that's like, you can't have that character swear. It'll look bad on our marketing department. Is I could be like, you can- What it. marketing department, you worms? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Molly is Trixie. I don't know if, I don't know if they've, now, I guess, uh, Danny, you were there for most of the read-through, but, like, I don't think anyone here has actually, you know, had the time to sit down and listen to Prison of Plastic, and they haven't done it more than once, so it would be pretty hard to do an impression of another another pop character. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you guys can, like, fill the silence while I do this, I can write out, like, two or three little sentences for each actual character body swapped with someone else and see see how you do if I'm allowed to put you on the spot. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. All right. Yeah, I need things to make my brain work. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Me taking my medication every day. <laughs> Literally, that is why my brain doesn't work right now. <laughs> Here, chat. Ask ask these lovely people questions while I do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We also got we'll some answer reviews sporadically. On the, yeah. We got some reviews on the Sound Booth Theater too. People are like really saying nice yeah, things. Yeah, talk about, about that. <gasps> Aww. Aww. Yeah, here, let me hold on. Hopefully it'll load for people. I had to like refresh it like four times. And it's really nice. I'm like, oh are you guys? Uh, yeah, so ah, yeah. like, absolutely amazing. I'm crying. <laughs> this book oh, is I am crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. Like, these people are so nice. Like, thank y'all. Why is Sandra so cool? You're right, Aww. chat. Why is Heck Sandra yeah. so cool? Why is Sandra Seriously, so cool? give us the formula. We gotta know. <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> Tell me! <laughs> You Every good? Morning, you have to start your day um, off with freaking out. If she doesn't tell us, shake her, boys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boss, we're gonna get the rattles out. It's all about the cheese factory lore. Oh. <laughs> like, it just made me remember the fucking babysitting mama game that had the... The... The fake baby you could put in your Wemo. Oh, no, 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 uh, da, 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 da. Yep. <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that's that's your recent favorite, I would think. I mean, that one's. I've loved that one for a while. Um, uh, I already told mine, which is the parrot one. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Man, Danny has a lot of good ones, but they're all in pretty heated moments that you should probably yeah. experience yourself. I'll just say my favorite chapter is chapter seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> look, every time Wy Wy <laughs> chapter seven is an hour and a half long. It's it's like three times the length of every other chapter. And it's mostly just a descent into like misery. And it ends at a really rough spot. And the whole time it just like emotionally it. And I mean this in a good way. It sucks to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Buy my book. Buy my book. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks to listen to. Five stars. But aren't you curious to see if it does get better? <laughs> People watching Infinity Train be like, Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, oh, oh man. No. The plastic is, hey, it's pretty good. <laughs> Everyone throws paper balls at me. Cello destroyed for animation opinions. <laughs> As everyone throwing paper balls at you, they go, how can we not hit them? It's because I'm deflecting with my new book that you can purchase on Soundbooth right now. <laughs> Cello's swinging at a wasp's nose. She sure I've... fucking is. George Costanza with the baseball bat. <laughs> oh, shit. You know what? Let me see if I can find the, the best rendition of that I've ever drawn. Very... Uh, uh, very topical for, for why we're all here today. A very old drawing. Let's see if I can find it. This might take me a bit. So continue whatever conversation you guys are having. I've only heard the segments of the book that Jello played for me, and it was like the parts that I was in, but I really loved fucking Trixie being like, remember when you had a crush on him for a year and just <laughs> just the way that Bryn goes, be nice to me. <laughs> be nice to me. Be nice to me. <laughs> Looking at Jello. <laughs> Oh, boy. Bryn, Bryn is excellent uh, as as Feeny, but also as an actor. In so far as she will take things that Jello has written that Jello says in a very specific way and say them in the most insane way you have ever heard in your life. And I'm like, that is a spin on that phrase that I've heard a bajillion times that I never would have expected. It's it's funny because both both Bryn and Kyle do that, but Kyle does it in ways where I'm like, that's genius. Never would have read it that way. I love it. And Bryn, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Good job. I, I pictured it being read that way. <laughs> but like, it's still insane. Bryn's a sharpshooter. Kyle comes up behind you with a bomb. <laughs> He doesn't drop it. He just holds it and stands and smiles at <laughs> smiles you. Smiles at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I do have, if Danny and Kyle are both here, here are your, here's a little conversation for you guys. Whoa, a dog. So. That's the baby. The baby's singing along. A baby. Aww, Hello, baby. Hi, baby. So the first one would be read by Danny. Um, but it's Giovanni <laughs> in Molly's body and vice versa for the next line. Oh boy. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me read it so I don't F it up. Yeah, it's, uh. both of these lines are a little wacky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Oh, <laughs> I'm small. Nice. I can like crawl into vents, hide in a bush, fall off a roof, and walk it off. I'm invincible now. Oh, uh, uh, I can assure you that I am not. I have very much a limited capacity of invincible. And that capacity is pretty much finished. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, <laughs> holy crap! Amazing, oh, beautiful, A excellent job. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, I love it. I oh, love I'm... a body swap arc. Very yes. funny. I I look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> You have, you have no idea. I don't have a place for it. I know which book it would have to be in and it makes no sense to put it there. And I, 
I want to do it so badly because my favorite thing in the world is when like a cartoon isn't lazy and they do the body swap episode, but like they do it for real. Mm -hmm. um, and they have <laughs> them like actually do impressions of each other. It's like, yes, do it. Um, but like, the only what is sense really? What is sense? No, it's like other stuff needs to happen that's more important. And like, for a while, I like I was seriously considering it. I was like, maybe you gotta could, like literally do like part of a oh walk a mile in each other's shoes thing where like Lori and Molly get swapped for a little bit, and then like. Lori bumps into their dad, but like in Molly's body and notices like, oh, you treat her differently. That's shitty. And like, that'd be a good moment. Mm -hmm. But it's like, but I was like, uh, no, that like to set that up, I'd have to stretch so many things and do them all differently. And it would be bad. The curse of Friday. being such a gifted writer. You just mm -hmm. can't let yourself do bad things. <laughs> Thank you. Dang. I can't possibly right. be bad. I found it. I found it. <laughs> An, an ancient relic of days gone gone by. Uh -huh. a, a glimpse into the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. Oh. Yeah, that's a fucking treasure. <laughs> There's this. Oz, do you have uh do you have the Can you teach me how to do yeah, a kick? Yes, flip? yes, I have it right here. Let me let me uh let me, uh, it was literally right behind that. That's my favorite. Would love to hear you and Kyle read that out. You can be Rex, yeah. I believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know, but it's some big big shoes to fill. They're no, on the they... wrong feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, they aren't. <laughs> They're tiny shoes. Why is he so sad? He's making the George Costanza face. Yeah. Okay, hang on, hang on. Get these images. Uh, it does look really similar to that one uh, Shiraishi face. It does! That's exactly what that Shiraishi face is, actually. It's the fucking George Costanza face. No, Shiraishi's is a neutral frown, and then George Costanza's is a neutral smile. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I'm getting these in order. Also, obsessed with old Giovanni artwork. He's scrunkly in a different way, but I still yes. love him. Yeah, his vibes from the Rube era are very different. It's it's funny, one of the easiest things to adapt here is that like the joke in Ooh. the original series is that like, hey, Lindsay's back, hello. Uh, hello. Is that the, the joke in the original series is that Giovanni sucked in the original series and was like a loser that nobody liked. Uh, and he, I, basically I took the end of the series Giovanni, like where he was as a person. I was like, you're starting there this time. Mm. Um, and OG Giovanni was a loser. And everyone was like, that guy's a fucking loser. So when Molly's sister's like, he's gorgeous. I have a crush on him. The joke is that her taste sucked. And now it's like, no, I get it. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody nods their heads along with Lorelai. All right. I literally uh, nodded. Kyle. You're right. Kyle and Oz, can you uh, read this this mm -hmm. exchange? Here, wait. I'm still getting it oh. set up. Oh, okay. Don't read the exchange yet. <laughs> oh. Hold. 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 <laughs> Hold. <laughs> okay. Should be good. Hey, I'll show you how to do a kickflip. Whoa, you know how to do a kickflip? Nope, but I can still try. Giovanni <laughs> falls down a manhole. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great there is uh, Discord did blow you up a little in that first read, Kyle, but in a way that it exactly would have done to Rube when, uh, when You're he played right. this character. <laughs> You're right, it's like it's still happening. <laughs> and switch microphones. It, it might be a Discord thing. Um, do you have the, what is it, like the auto-adjust thing oh, on? the noise suppression. Oh, yeah. no, I don't yeah, the input, <laughs> input sensitivity. Uh, if you have it on auto, it'll eat you. Eat this. Uh, I'll check on that. All right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to write a swap for Ramsey and Percy. 
Good. Oh, Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> Ooh. Christ. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, both I'm not going to lie. I've always kind of imagined that. <laughs> that would be fun. I'm Rambo really is wanted... just one of my favorite characters. I love him so much. Aww. And I love Percy because I don't know how to replicate that speech pattern at all. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> oh my god, look at this artwork. Oh my god. That's my go-to. Oh my god. <laughs> I love it Ooh. so much. Yeah, that both one. The that tears. One, I can physically feel <laughs> that because I've world. been that guy before. <laughs> Why? This is better. Oh. This is better if you think it's Boba. Thunk. Define better. Thunk. Thunk. Oh my God. <laughs> Just sounds like a potato gun's going off next to you. The thing is, though, look at his face. He is owning whoever's dared him to do this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He won. Sir, I, I asked you mom, to leave. I think. Could I? I think mom. Mom told me not to do this. <laughs> But mom's I not here. I, I oh sure yeah, this her. is for sure a moxie bed. <laughs> I love the idea of Giovanni going, Mom told me not to do this, but she's not here. Other mom is like, I am stop! <laughs> I know, other mom other mom is the one that dared him. <laughs> I can I can completely see Moxie daring. Moxie is uh, Trixie's older sister, by the way. Moxie daring Giovanni, like, hey, I bet that you can't drink all four of these sodas at the same time before I can eat all the styrofoam in these four cups. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Competitive eating contest. <laughs> Man. One of my favorite, like, underrated performances of the original source material is um, Plaster, the musician, was also in it. And for <laughs> one sitting, she played a character named Regina Sand. Holy shit. Oh my god. I, I love, who is now, uh, this might never get brought up in an important context, but she is the president of Taiga Country in this version. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a war vet. <laughs> so, that path. That path kind of writes itself. And, oh, Christ. And uh, Regina was a lot. And uh, Yumta and this character, Moxie, were both in there. And Regina insistently oh. referred to them as Pink 1 and Pink 2. Yeah. <laughs> I like your spirit, Pink 2. It's fucking hilarious. And uh, one of the best, like, like a will tier immediate one-liner uh, was... God, it must have been like Ramsey or Giovanni or someone was like near a, to like they were in a cell and there was a toilet in the cell and like they were like trying to chip through a wall or something. And one of them was like, oh, God damn it, I can't make this work. And immediately Plaster goes, the potty mouth is why you're near the toilet, son. Son. <laughs> <laughs> God. I just no, found I just this again while I was looking for God, I love this. He is crying. Image. God, he I, is crying. If if Ray shows up, <laughs> pull this yeah. back up, please. Even though he has no lines, <laughs> he could just he could just do efforts. The efforts of. <laughs> I think the only reason I never dubbed this is because we didn't have a official Rick voice for two. No, years. we didn't have Actually, one yet. Yeah, drew this right after season one. So yeah. Someone just uh, retweeted it this morning again. It's like, yeah, today is a good day to retweet that, actually. I think it was me. <laughs> I was like, this... Because I, I retweeted it, and I was like, no joke, this is why Bo got the job. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> All right, let me keep writing this. I've seen Percy's body. I'm gonna beer beat real quick. How are you feeling, Lindsay? How was your day when you stepped away? She's is dead. busy. I have kids. Ooh. It's terrible. No, I love them. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's all good. It's a holiday season, so there's all stuff to do. Yeah, it's true. Oh, my. Oh, perfect. I was hoping someone else would show up, and what a great pair for a voice swap. <laughs> oh, boy. Huh? Uh Is there Sylvie and Mara? <laughs> Yeah, so we did a we did a Giovanni and um, 